Toter? Here. Mr. Kelly? Present. Mr. Cole? Present. Mr. Matt? Present. Ms. Palestrini? Here. Mr. Robinson? Present. Okay, awesome. Everyone is here at count of four. Can you please rise for the pledge if you're able? To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Is anyone signed up to speak this evening? We have nobody for the board meeting. Okay. Uh, before you, you have the meeting minutes from uh, March 7th, 2024. Please review them at this time. Mayor, I just have a couple of comments. Sure. Um, uh, and just a simple one. Page one, my first name should be listed on there because it's always the first name and the last name. The very beginning. And it just says trustee follow stream. So just to start it off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> two is why are we not putting staff present anymore? We used to I don't list. know that we I really don't know that we ever did, did we? Yeah. It was each, you know, Jay was their attorney. We could certainly add Virtually that. as well as regularly. Can we, can we, can we? It usually is. I don't know why it's not. Okay. But you are correct. It usually is. Okay. It's also. Can we add the staff? Yeah. That's just because, I mean, they, they you know, contribute a lot. You're, you're correct. They usually are. I don't know. Okay. Um, on number four for public comments. Can we put what the topic is? I mean, we're not going to get into a long reason, but I mean, if a resident comes out to speak, I think it should at least be, you know, on a zoning or flooding or something. So just even one word. So I think that that was by nature of us trying to consolidate the minutes in that. I know. So maybe, maybe 30,000 foot yeah. overview. This, I mean, honestly, just regularly, just because it's mm -hmm. gotten to just be Motion made, second, sure. eyes, next topic. And it just looks like we don't do anything or talk about anything, we just approve it. Oh, no, I understand that, so, but that's why there's video um, recordings available on the website for context. The, the, this board was the one that said that our meetings were too, yeah. our, our minutes were too in depth. Mm -hmm. And so I think that this is just. A happy meeting, maybe, just so that it doesn't look like we just had motions made throughout the meeting and just. And that's just my feeling. How's the rest of the board feel? Because they can take another stab at this. We can table the minutes and then we can approve them. No, I, we can still approve them. But I mean, I just, I just want a little bit more meat to it so it doesn't look so. Because again, we this was the, the changes that you see to the meeting minutes as they're presented now is just based on the desire of the board, will of the board, comments of the board to kind of condense them so that they're not so in depth. You can make it shorter, just, just by changing the pagination, and so there's not a lot of space in between eyes and A's and everything. So, so, so what, what is the rest of the board feeling about minutes? Are we are, are we good with them? Do we need to add more detail? Does there need to? I want to do what the board feels is correct. We have video, right? Yeah. Some fine little. Yeah. I appreciate your input. Yeah, just kind of nice to show that. Trustee I agree with I, I, I agree with you about the citizens' comments. Yeah. I think that we should put the topic that they spoke about, not just broad concerns. So, and last thing is the announcements. Thirteen. I I know that the mayor said. Oh yeah, me, I'm going too. But it was you that did the announcement. Yeah, say. don't don't give me credit for that. The announcements were 13. Oh, oh right. I have it in my notes. Mm -hmm. so, yes. That's all I have. Let me go do it. that black out there. Is it you really? I almost uh I almost got in the ambulance as well. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing over there, but I think like, they couldn't get me to stop bleeding. <laughs> yeah, I Yeah, we almost called you guys the professionals. <laughs> they were afraid I was gonna. They they were busy anyway, so anyway. Can <laughs> I get a motion? Hey, to, can I get a, a motion to approve the minutes with the changes presented by Trustee Bowman? So moved. Second. 
Questions, comments, concerns? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, uh, tonight we have a public hearing. We have two public hearings scheduled, actually. Um, so do I need a motion to go into the public hearing, or can I just open it? What's been the custom? I, I, I'm relying on you because we don't do this very often. Open it. Open it. All right. So the first one, I'm going to open the public hearing uh, regarding the establishment of SSA number 30 uh, for Briar Hill Ventures and Midwest Companies. We talked about this a little while ago. This is just for uh, improvements that they need to maintain. It's a shared agreement between the two. And this is the public hearing tonight, and then it becomes effective in 60 days automatically. Uh, correction. Sorry. In 60 days, you'll be voting on the ordinance yeah. to approve it. Right. So, yeah. um, and all the notifications are made as, as per the law for the public hearing and all that stuff. Does anyone have any questions um, about this? SSA. Okay. I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing for the establishment of the public service area number 30. Ms. Lyons. Mr. Hedges. I was just, Rich Olson has signed up on this public no, hearing and, and I believe it's a mistake. So, sure. okay. Has anyone signed up to speak otherwise? No. Okay. No, we're good. Thank you. Okay, so I have, a, I have a motion to close and a second. Questions or comments? I need to call roll or Ms. Clerk needs to call the roll. I'm sorry, who was the second? I was. Thank you. Yes, no, maybe? No, we can do it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Fantastic. That public hearing is closed. The next is the public hearing uh, I would like to open. Regarding the annexation agreement for the Tina Hero subdivision, properties located at 44W459 and 44W369 Big Timber Road. And that's uh, basically uh, uh, 20 in Big Timber. Um, all legal notices were made for the public hearing. Yes. Is there anyone signed up to speak for this public hearing? There are two gentlemen here available to answer questions. Um, they are Joseph Gattenmaller. Gattenmaller. Uh, and also James Condon, uh, the consulting engineer, and this is um, Alejandro Tinegro. No, sorry. Gonzalo. Gonzalo Tinegro. Gonzalo Tinegro, who's the owner of the business. I think you've all met mm -hmm. Gonzalo before. Mm -hmm. So they're here to answer questions, but not going to answer statements. That, Mr. Rosselli. Pursuant to the in statute, we do need to have a public hearing before the proposed annexation It is possible that we have it on the same evening as custom of the bill for to do so. We have in your board packet um, on page 15 or 13, excuse me, through 14 of the packet, a short memorandum with regard to the key provisions of the annexation agreement. Um, as you will see, I'm sure you've all read it. But as you will see, it is a pretty standard agreement. And the agreement outlines the obligations for the development of the construction of the infrastructure, internal infrastructure and roads, utilities, stormwater management systems, all at the expense of the owner. Um, Mr. Tina Harrow um, has received a positive recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission with regards to this for all land use approvals thereon, which will be concurrently reviewed and uh, are set for adoption tonight if the board wants to get one of these. Of course, we will be doing SSA like we do for all of these projects pursuant to the King County Stormwater. Any questions about the agreement in your packet? Would you prefer to talk about that at the public hearing? Do we talk about that during our regular business? We'll talk about it now. That's I would I think we're talking about it now is fine. Uh, well, no, the question, well, we've got a, we've got a lot on the agenda tonight. I would say we have like six motions. Do we yeah. you know, during right. each motion? Yeah. So I, I yeah, I think that I think that we can for the sake of our, our guests here, we can either do this during public hearing if that's the will of the board, or we close the public hearing and have a discussion during our, our regular meeting as it's on the agenda. Does that mean Does that, that they have to stay to the end because we've got a presentation in the middle? And then a fire district, and then comes down to them. So I don't know what the the guests they're planning to stay at the very end. 
I guess I'm looking, we're, we're looking for some guys. For some guys yeah. Then let's do them when they come up and arise and, we, and see if there's, a, there's no one signed up to speak with regards to this. We have discharged your obligation pursuant to the state statute with regard to the annexation. There's nobody signed up. I thought there was somebody signed up for something. Only to answer questions. Can, can I, I just have just sure. a couple basic ones that you just to get out. The property itself, uh, um, I, you know, when you drive by it, I know there's a house that's there that kind of looks abandoned, but from previous times here, um, I don't remember who was talking about it, but that there was somebody living in there and had not left. Um, and then I know there was, I shouldn't say the word I know, I believe there was a second house that was at the like down deep into the property close to the school. And eventually it's not on every single one of the maps and stuff or the diagrams, but I see the one which is right up on a big timber. But I never saw where the, the second house was and I thought maybe that had been torn down. So you can see it from row. You can see both houses. You can see it from row 20. But it's not in the, it it's was not here. If I may joke yeah. on, Mark, sure, absolutely. it's not in the packet because it's not being next. We don't own it. Okay. That that home is still owned by another person, and he's not part of this petition. Okay, so there's like a, there's, there's a separate a go around. So there's a cutout in the in the okay. when you look at the plaques that are inside buried further down in the packet, you'll see a cutout, and that cutout is okay. where that house. Is. That's where the house. Is. Yeah, if you look at lot, I believe it's lot yeah. three there in your map. Right. There's a driveway looks like, and then there's a square. Correct me if I'm wrong. And you're right. and that's where West lives. Okay. Um, and so his mother owned the house on the corner, okay. the ranch style home. Okay. And then he owns the two story that's still standing. Trustee, page 59, your packet. And yeah, it's the exception. It almost looks like a square. I believe it's about 250 feet. Okay. Yeah, and that's what I thought, and I put a question mark in it, but. It's deeper in there showed a cutout of a house, and that's why. Is there anybody living in the house that is on the property? I'm the owner of the property. No, there's nobody living in the house. Nobody. And we do have a permit to demolish that property. Okay. So once we annex into the into the town and we start moving, that property is coming down right immediately. Okay. okay. So we're just waiting for this process so we can mobilize. I mean, there is equipment there ready to do it. But we haven't really not because it's been um for over a year and a half it's been abandoned okay okay because in, in the agreement it lists there are no electors residing upon it so i just want there's to nobody sure yeah, there's... okay thank you very much everything else i think okay. any other questions for the public hearing i'll entertain a motion to close said public hearing second questions comments concerns all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you very much. Um, I just, uh, I guess, a point of clarification. Uh, Chief Herman and Deputy Chief Larson are here. Are you here for the presentation for Lennar Holmes or are you here for your letter? Both. Okay. <laughs> well, the reason I was asking is because we moved your letter up. If, if that's why you're no, here. it's fine. You're fine. Seconds. Thank so, you. Appreciate that, though. All right. Thank you. With that, Mr. Mayor, we've asked you, uh, Lennar Holmes, would like to make a presentation. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, uh, Richard Olson, who is the uh, uh, principal at Lenar, and uh, Richard's met with the village several times, and then also uh, I think you all know Mr. Murphy. Sorry, I've read the red wrong. Rich Murphy, who is the land uh, entitlement manager for Lenar, and then you also know Richard Olson, who's been here several times for Crown, uh, who's the landscape. So they'll be talking about some plans they have coming up in the village. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for coming tonight. Good evening. Thank you for listening to us and thank you for uh, past courtesies and we appreciate the uh, ability to con you know, continue with our business over at Thames Farm and uh, um, I guess, you know, some of this I think you're all familiar with because we've been in here a few times. Um, we're looking at a property on the south side of uh, Oakland Road, uh, just a little east of, uh, it's in Getzelman, right? Um, about uh, 157 acres. Can you use the weekly so we can see it? Yeah, maybe Thank advance you. to that, you know, and I'll let uh, Rich Olson talk about this plan and the planning uh, features and, and so on and so forth. 
but we're looking at uh, doing basically some of the same single family that you see at Tam's Farm. Uh, a couple of single family lineups in there in different phases here, as well as introducing some uh, traditional townhomes that would be uh, three bedrooms and basically ranging from 1,600 square feet to about 1,840 square feet. I'm sorry, so, can you scroll up? Where's the top border of this? Yeah, it's up at Oak Knoll, and we come in here, and again, I'll let uh, I'll let Rich talk about planning there features and, and no, why it's more important. I'm good. Can you print this up? Yeah. Thank you. You guys have a comment? Okay. So maybe just quickly advance through the next couple of slides. I think you're familiar with our company. We're a second build uh, biggest city in the country in the Chicago area. We're building about 1,500 homes last year. And it's getting uh, more every year. I think a part of it is because we have a mortgage company. We buy down mortgage rates and they're very attractive to our home buyers at, I think, 4.99%. Uh, we pay the difference and uh, uh, usually and figure out how to get people in a home, you know, and uh, and that's a good business plan. Kind of evens out our flow here. We've transitioned from when I started working here uh, to now. It was originally just built when people ordered a home, pretty much, and now we just start uh, four, five, six a month, depending on the, the, the demand, and we basically a fairly even flow. So it's it's. It's dynamic pricing, and we get people in the home. By the time the home is finished, it's almost always sold. So if you want to buy a home, you get attractive mortgage rates, plus you get a closing that happens within the time frame of any fee, you know, fee locks on your, on your mortgages, and also uh, you get a chance, you know, to have a quick closing, you know, sometimes in less than 30 days. So I think... Uh, you know, I think if you have any questions about our company, I'm happy to answer it. But uh, we're working in about 40 communities between here in Northwest Indiana, and we have some four communities in the suburbs of uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Location map. Um, so let's just keep this advanced through a couple of slides here. Location map. We're uh, I think we're in the richest domain here. So I think let's let, let Rich talk about site planning parameters. And, uh, you know, we'll have a couple of slides here with the architecture on it for you. Okay. Thank you, Rich. One more. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rich Olson. I'm with PRR Weber Associates. Good to be back. Um, to folks, and we're happy to bring an exciting project and hopefully um, get some good feedback. What I thought I would do um, is just briefly walk through some of the planning factors uh, on the site, how we arrived at where we did, and then walk through the plan itself, and then talk a little bit about some of the features that we're working on, and then uh, turn back over to Rick to talk a little more about the architecture and, of course, answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, this is the context, or this is the uh, property location, as Rick mentioned, south of Oak Mill Drive. Um, and it's primarily surrounded by farmland. To the north, you've got, um, you've got existing uh, residential, you've got Tuscany Woods there just to the northeast. Directly to the, to the east of the site itself, um, you've got uh, farmland, you've got farmland to the south. And to the west, you also have farmland, then transitions to single family. Uh, the site is, as I already mentioned, is about 157 acres. And of course, is existing farmland in its state today. Um, you can advance the next slide. This is the pretty color slide. So mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of things that we do have to revolve around the individual site itself. And we look at a lot of different, what we call planning factors. Um, and those are things like topography, uh, site access for, from a vehicular standpoint, pedestrian. Uh, we also look at any sort of natural <laughs> characters of the site, trees, any sensitive uh, environmental factors. And what you see up here on the on the colors is that that tells you that we've got a little bit of a rolling topography. If you go out there, you're going to see that there's plenty of uh, grade change uh, throughout the site. The 
high points are in the red there that you see in the X marks, and the low points are in the yellow. And typically, we want to put the houses on the high points of the site, and on the lower points, you're probably going to typically see more like the stormwater retention. Uh, this site is pretty void of any existing trees except for around the existing house. Um, but we do have a little tributary that runs crosswise through the uh, through the upper portion of the site. And so that's a sensitive area that we want to, of course, protect and preserve and, and plan around. Can you go to the next one? So we are proposing um, a mix of our residential types. We're looking at three, three product mixes. And we're uh, introducing about 296 homes, all broken into two single family uh, product sizes, as well as a uh, traditional town home. Uh, we are proposing two access points at this time off of Oak Knoll to the north. Um, reach down here. Uh, and the nice thing about off of the entry that you're going to find is all three product types are right off of the entrance. So you have uh, on the west side of off of the entrance, you have the townhomes. There's a detention pond there as well. You can see it in the northwest corner. And then the two single family product lines are next to that. Um, the roadway pattern continues south across that tributary that I talked about uh, in, the, in the sort of the northern section of the site. So we want to have two crossings, of course, so we have good access to the southern portion of the site. And then along the southern portion of the site, you see two large uh, column pods. You've got, you've got the western pod uh, surrounding the detention area there in the open space. And then on the east side, you have another, like a third pod. So if you think of this property in, in three zones, you got the north of the, north of the tributary, uh, and that's a pod, and you got south of the tributary, and then sort of east. Go to the next slide. So one of the things that, that I talked about at the beginning was a little bit about uh, preserving natural areas of the site. This is sort of my green infrastructure slide. Um, and what you're going to see here are things like you've got the, the protection of the sensitive natural area that comes through the site. And what we've done is place the detention basins um, as a buffer between those, as well as a nice park area. And that helps with the sort of the green infrastructure treatment train that we have. So you follow all the water for the naturalized attention and then the tension speed into the treatment itself. So that filters out the water in the top. We also have um, a really nice um, pathway system that runs through the site. There's a picture up in the far uh, far northeast corner of the site. And this is uh, typically what we what we design as far as our naturalized pond. So that's what you're you're going to see out the back of the homes and throughout the site where we have stormwater uh, areas. Go to the next slide. A little touch base, a little bit on some of our community social uh, nodes here that, that we talk about, and that's really uh, the fun stuff of the site itself. You got. Three sort of distinct communities to the one to the north, central, and then east. And each one of those communities were proposed some sort of park <clears throat> feature. And that would be play structures, in some case seating areas, and just nice open, open, uh, open areas as well. The the red line that you see that connects them would be connection to a, a nice trail system that would lead through the site. And I think we'll even develop this even further to try and further connect to the to the east as well. Um, the blow up that you see up there is that we're developing a nice park system. And one of the largest parks is up in the north uh, area next to the tributary. And this park would consist of playgrounds, seating areas, and of course open open play areas. The pictures that you see on the on the ground on the bottom are are sort of inspirational shots of different communities. Gives you an idea. I think I think this one would be nice to have sort of a natural play design since it's right next to the tributary and has some of that nice open space uh, features. The center ones are just a nice overlook feature. And then the one to the right is uh, a little pocket park. And I think, you know, we'd like to have three of those of different sizes throughout the, throughout the community itself. But we've also placed the detention areas um, 
in strategic locations so that they are usable. There are also amenities to the site. For example, this large uh, detention area to the sort of the south central, all those homes back up to it. Of course, they're going to get the views out the backs of those. And it's going to be real, real nice for those, for those residents. Uh, same thing with the southeastern. We've got another uh, green space detention area that essentially will serve as a real nice open space for those folks. Um, and with that, I'll turn it back over to to um, to Rick to talk a little bit about the architecture. But we're super excited. We've got lots of things that we're going to be planning for this development. Lots of amenities. Lots of preservation of the green space area that um, is sensitive to the site, and lots of active and passive preservation for residents. Thanks. Can I ask a question before sure. you you hang up? Is with with that tributary that kind of comes down and that's kind of melded into all those social type areas. Is there a bridge or something because it's crossing over streets and is there some kind of a bridge that would kind of connect it or? So if you go back to the just the concept plan, so it's bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, essentially, the 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 tributary runs diagonal through the site, and we would be crossing it at two points, and those would be um, we 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 cross those with an appropriate crossing. Haven't figured out what that exactly would be from from the regulatory community or what we do. We cross those in, in the right way. And then the nice thing, I'm glad he blew that up. I just love the 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 what we've done here with the sort of the you see the tributary is protected by a zones of green space on it. And they've got the park there. That park is going to be a nice central park that will be open and safe and and, and really a, a nice central break between the north half and the south half. It's, it, it'll end up being a really nice spot. And that tributary continues off site to the east as well as to the north. So all the developments that will come through here will have to work through that, and there's also a wetland complex that runs through there. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we'll be preserving that wetland feature as it runs through. And it's just off to the south and borders our site, too, which is really nice. One of the things to note about that tributary, the Hampshire Creek actually runs up. Uh, the way that that water will flow will actually go up towards town. It's the one that goes right by the chicken dip and then back mm -hmm. between the houses. During large rains, it will flood in the in the field areas. They've just redone, as you've seen, the 72 area, so it can withstand, but it will get to the top of that area. Mm -hmm. And then the house is beyond. I'm a little nervous seeing a lot of detention ponds around that, which would collect additional water and, as you said, feed it into something that already has some of those concerns. So I just ask you to keep that in mind. And Definitely. Potentially, we'd want to require a water study, downstream water impact study mm -hmm. of what having detention ponds all feeding into that tributary could do to the, the mm -hmm. homes but also businesses downstream right. yeah just to and to elaborate that we're very sensitive to the, the issue of this of the, the treatment train let's call it from mm -hmm. the on-site um uh, runoff into the naturalized ponds and we design those ponds for for a very specific task and it's not only just to collect and hold water and then release it at the right rate but it's also a filtering system with the natural uh, the natural landscape plantings that we put in there. We go all, all the way from the wet <laughs> species all the way up to the, the prairie species that, that take the different waters at the different times. As far as the concern about, um, you know, the detention ponds and their proximity, there, we definitely will make sure that's studied appropriately and the right distance will be out of the wetlands. So we'll be out of the floodplain. There's a there's, there'll be a small floodplain that will run through there and, and certainly we'll make sure that that's appropriately designed. So that we don't have any issues with the uh, with the town for sure. That's actually the line that you see. Um, on that. Any other questions? I'm sorry. Can I follow yeah. up with one other concern. Um, the park that's right there will that be at a, a slightly higher elevation? Yes. Then, as a result of the the floods that will come. Yes. Um, and also the the pathway that you mentioned that would be connecting is that yeah. pedestrian slash bike path or whatever it will be. Is that going to be also protected from the flood? That is correct. Yeah. So, um, and, and of course, this is at a very right. concept level. We're going to have to make sure that we. This is the beginning process to to make sure that um, you got you folks are on board with just having us the opportunity to to, to go through that that um, that study and and to make sure we have it. But 
-hmm. The short answer is the pathway system will will meander through the backs of the lots and then it'll ma match up with the road cross over those uh, tributaries so it'll be elevated and of course the park will absolutely be out of the floodplain uh, as well as the interaction with the wetland to make sure that's high and dry and usable active recreation not sure. underwater not underwater okay. <laughs> to make sure. unless there's a huge massive event that was none of us will be all underwater so. Any other questions? I really thought this could be informal, and if there's any other thoughts, I'm, I'm here. We're excited. Is there already a development agreement? No, this is the first time we're seeing this. It's just a, an idea that they want to, the concept they want to present to the board, get some feedback, and then we can start the, uh, they would have to start the annexation. But the land, you've already purchased the land at all. It's under contract. It's under contract. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I was like, Contrary to what has typically happened as we've been yeah. here, this is the first residential development that's approached cool. us so, wanted to build. Yeah, so this is open for, for just feedback and discussions, especially with the success Lenar has had at, at Pam's Farm, or Tame's Farm, however you want to pronounce it. I saw it quickly on here when it, there was a bottom part of one of the pages, and apologies, I don't have it in front of me. We're talking about lot sizes. I think that the lot sizes that, uh, this is my personal opinion, the lot sizes that were approved within Crown, I disagreed with those. I think the lot sizes that were kept within Ames Farm because they were what was established back early in the 2000s um, have been successful. The, the Tams Farm is, is selling fine and building plenty of homes. I would not want to see this development come in with the smaller lot sizes. I'm just giving my personal opinion. And I had the same opinion when we talked about it with the town development, but I think there are plenty of small lot products now going to be available in Hampshire. There are not of the larger size lots. So I would bring that into consideration. I would echo yeah. that as well. We do have quite a few that have got approved of more than larger lots I mean, they make balance to them. The, um, I was just going to say the feedback that we've gotten from the community has been echoing that same sentiment. Um, so it is something that we definitely need to be sure. Rick, if I'm reading this correctly, these are 70 foot, 71 foot wide and 65 foot wide, is that correct? Yes, uh, the, the product mix that we've got is, uh, is very specifically geared toward the product and You've got uh, two different uh, product types, and Rick will talk about them in a little more detail. Um, but they're sized for those products for sure. And it's uh, very important for the developer to to obviously have uh, something that works uh, and it's and it's and it's good quality home. And we certainly will take a look at what we've got. Yeah, I'm not talking about the home that goes on the lot. Yeah, I'm just talking about the lot itself. So, uh, so uh, maybe maybe we can have a kind of a summary of. What's happened since the early 2000s? I mean, most of the home builders and developers at that time went bankrupt. Um, and subsequent to that, um, we were able to, and I think Farm is a good example of that. You know, a lot of the, the, the properties that we developed were, let's say, let's say distressed, uh, abandoned, and needed to be restarted. And a lot of those properties were purchased at a discount to what it would cost to bill today. I would say land development costs from before uh, 2008 were half of what they are now, okay, and the consumer's income probably isn't half. Uh, interest rates are higher. Um, when I talked about what it's taking to sell homes now, uh, those, those mortgage discounts are substantial. And when they were approaching 8%, the number was fairly big. And it was, it, it takes a fairly big dent out of, you know, the income revenue from the sales. But, you know, from a from a strategic standpoint, from a corporation, the decision is made to keep everything even on the sales front. Do what we have to do to keep people moving into homes. And the benefit of that is if we cut everything in half, we lose our staff, we lose our subcontractors. We have fought from, when I started, I started in 2018 at this time, we were building 600 a year and we were working, the only thing we could build at that time were these distressed communities. And we were getting those for a fraction of what it costs today. 
I would say our typical, our typical developed lot cost, home site cost, from then to today is, is triple of what it is because those home sites are all gone. It's at least triple. Some of those, some of those home, home sites went for basically a song, and they had to because the home buyer couldn't afford it. They were just getting out of that recession, and you know everybody was recovering. And now it's, you know, obviously the economy is a little more heated up, but it's also heated up on inflation. So the affordability is a, is a really big problem. So when we talk about everything that we build into this, you know, permit fees, impact fees, construction costs, it has brought everything. The typical, and the typical, how we look at uh, land development costs is typically pretty much in line with um, lineal footage of front ends. So when you talk about, you know, 80 foot wide home sites, today's consumer isn't looking for it and they can't afford it. It's part of the problem. Now what we can do is give them a very nice community. If we go back to the site plan, what why we like Rich's team and what they do is we can take that land and focus it on open spaces and amenities to make a beautiful community. And that's what we do. And we want Instead of gridding things out and making it, you know, fairly run of the mill, we have a lot, a lot of open spaces focused. People go, they drive in here and go, oh, that's a nice place to live. And that's what we're looking for. So you look at that, some of that home site size and you go, oh, the home site is, but it's here. It's in these common areas. So that's what we're doing. And I'm not, I'm not trying to argue with you, but the fact of the matter, there's a lot of communities with zoning but no, but no home builder can afford to go back in there under those conditions. So and, and to that point, is that where Lennar is now? And I'm not looking to argue with you either. No, no. But is that, is that where Lennar is now? Because we have 3,500 approved lots, it's a right, are, that are already this size within the community? I that, I yeah, I understand, understand that in the middle. Some of those go down as small as 51. Understood. Understood. But what I'm getting at is, is that we we have several several lots available, all ready to go. Understood. This size, and we and this board made several concessions mm -hmm. at the disappointment, I'll say, to other to the community in some regard that we chopped up lot sizes and add, added homes and stuff, and you know, in our argument or our rationale. To that conversation was is that to your point early 2000s home buyer we needed to find a way to create an affordable product we needed the diversification of our offerings um, from a home perspective for the different buyers that are trying to downsize and all of that yeah so i guess i i, I appreciate the knowledge and insight that you're giving us yeah. respectfully we've heard it before and we just went. We, we, we just went. We went through this process with property that was sitting vacant, that wasn't being built or developed or any of that kind of stuff. And now we're at a point where we've done all of that. And again, I, I, I'm not trying to rain on your parade here, but I think that um, I think that we did what we needed to do to kind of get building going here within the village. And now you're approaching us with a, with a concept where, while it is beautiful, you need to understand the concerns that we as a board have mm -hmm. about approving the same thing that we've been beat up for doing to try to get building going. So the number one question that we are going to get asked, I would imagine, is why did you approve the same type of subdivision on 72 that still hasn't started around Big Timber Elementary? It still hasn't started as you go down toward Prairie Ridge. I mean, the rest of the board is welcome to comment here, but that's kind of where my head is. And I'm not trying to be abrasive. I'm not trying to oh. rain on your parade. Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to understand it yeah. so that we can have educated conversations with our residents. Yeah, we're here. We're here to Yeah, I, I, I definitely would. I, I've heard. Uh, I was part of the other developments. I, I, I've heard what you guys have had to say, and I, I certainly perfectly get what you're, what you're saying. One of the things that we'll have to do is we'll have to look at what we have and try and come up with a plan that makes sense for both parties. One of the challenges is the projects don't pencil out for the developers if you go to an 80-foot wide lot. Nobody wants to buy that. They can't make the numbers work. 
they'll just go away. I so don't know, you say nobody wants to buy it. No developer wants to buy the land then, or no consumer wants to buy the land because Tam's farm is going to contradict that. Again, that one of the things that was brought up on that is that that land was purchased essentially for. Right, but that's why I'm asking. For for the nothing. Consumer right has a is purchasing those type of homes faster than they are the other ones. So now, yes, the price point right. may be equal, or all things may be equal, and it may be a higher price point for a larger area. So maybe we're right. talking about a little bit more expensive homes. Right. But the the theory that people don't want to, we were told as boards, well, people don't want to care for homes. They don't. They don't want to mow. They don't want to do these things. Yet the property that Lenar has out there, which is a beautiful area sure. with bigger lots, pulls more permits or has in the past pulled more permits faster yeah. than any other development around here yeah. because they're selling faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, again, I understand there's a price difference because it's based on an earlier purchase price. But if every developer comes in and says, people want smaller lots, so we build smaller lots. And all we're building is smaller lots. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because people only can buy smaller lots, so then that's all right. that's available. Right. It, it, those are those are very valid understandings and points. One of the things that you have to do is to get to that point first. And in order to get to a point where you have a, a project that that you can sell a home on, you have to have the seller be able to sell the property to the developer, and the developer has to understand the infrastructure, all the things that he has to put into it, and then he generates a number and says, "Okay, this makes sense because we can make." A certain amount of profit that makes sense. If you can't get to that point, because you know, if they had to pencil this product project out with say 80 foot wide lots, they can't get the seller's price. They can't get their price to match up, and then you, you, the deal goes elsewhere. So at this, the economics of the situation mandates that you have a certain product size, and then what you have to do is we have to come up with a community that that does work for both parties and you guys we have to come up with something that there's a, a fabulous community that has all the amenities and the amenities that you would put into this uh project would, would be would be immense because of the size of the project but as far as getting back to the getting to the table is the problem if you if you pencil product up with too big a lots and nobody can afford to buy the property or build homes on it if you if you sort of bought a Lamborghini, now this is a bad analogy. The 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 the, the analogy with the um, with the Tuscany Woods, if you already have something that's a bigger lot, but you bought it for a smaller lot price, certainly you can then put that on the market and people will of course buy that. But if you had to purchase that same lot at market rates back then and try and sell that at an elevated price, nobody would buy it because it would be it would gap up to here in their pricing. And even though it's a bigger lot, they wouldn't be to purchase it because it would be too expensive. So you got you got to balance and what I'm trying to kind of get at is you got we have to and we have to come back to you with the right with what, what you're telling us we have to balance the affordability issue with being able to put a well, product on the market. I think that's a hard concept for this board to understand um, yeah. affordability in general and I'm not, that's, I'm not that, that's insulting. No, no, that's no, no, I, that's I, I, no what I'm saying is, is be, to, just follow me with this. When you come to us and say that you want to make an affordable home, but yet the asking price is over most what anybody in this town is willing to pay, when you're looking at three, four hundred thousand dollars for what is considered affordable, that's where I'm going with it, Trustee Coast. It's not it's not a matter of any intellect. It's a you say that a four hundred thousand dollar home is an affordable home because the lot size is smaller or more affordable than if the home the lot size was larger. And we sit here at a board level and go, how the heck can anybody afford this? I applaud you for coming I agree. for your concept plan. I recommend you worked with our uh, village manager for lot sizes and whatnot and work out some of those things before you come back to the board. Thank you. Can I, can I expand on that a little bit? Um, sure. Slightly. 508. Mm -hmm. Affordability is, is uh, of course, relative. Um, we have to be sensitive. Then we're we're in a we're in a open market. We're selling against other developers. We're selling against ourselves, right? So I would be hard pressed to say that even with a homeowner uh, a home site that's narrower than Thames Farm, that we could actually sell sell afford to sell a home for less than Thames Farm. 
So afford or pricing, if there's a sensitivity to being lower priced, I, I don't, we'll always try to sell a house for as much as we can, but we're capped out by the home buyer's ability to do it. Sure. And I, I, I think the appreciation for what we're doing to sell homes, you know, it's, it's not obviously not your concern, but the, the home site value that comes out of this home, I don't believe is going to be significantly different than that. Because going back to the, the, the Thames Farm and all these other ones like that, our cost to develop on this home site is much less than when we go over there. Yeah. Just because where we've come in the cost of land development in the last 15 years, and you know some of that land development was done, but there was agreements made, fee differences, all kinds of things that are different. And so the differential is there. So, um, yeah, I think I understand from, you know, previous times here that, you know, side yard setbacks was a concern. I think we're fine with the side yard setbacks that, that you set forth and, and some of those agreements and those plats. But, but really, um, we can dedicate more open space on a property without... The land cost is, is is not the big thing. It's the land development cost. And that is about frontage. And put two homes side by side against what it costs to, to develop the extra 10, 15 feet, they'll always pick that other one. Okay, they always will. Every single time. So that's what we're trying to convey to you. It's not we're not we're not arguing and and you know we're happy to work with, with with your staff but certainly first and foremost we came in here for input and, and hoping you know that uh, you want to consider what we got and have this discussion so you know not not here to argue about it now we want to show you our product and i think you've seen a lot of it before the single family homes that are basically at this level that's open it's kind of open brought some samples of what we do in the Thames Farm and we know that we're, we're, we're building homes from about 1,500 square feet to 20, 60, 2,700, maybe more than that. So, and those homes are, what, starting at 375, I think maybe. For the 1,500 square foot. 363,000 is where we start. So, um, again, the basis for that so we come over here, there is going to be probably a jump just because of our cost of develop. Those, so we talk about that creek crossing, that is a special bridge. And it all gets permitted and, you know, all goes through the, all the stormwater reviews and everything. And the, 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 the base flood elevations are very well known on the Army Corps flood plans and engineer, this is what engineers do. So they, they sort all that out. But, but the point is, the cost of doing that is 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 very high. So so, so we'll we'll thank you for your time yeah. and thank you for I hear your input. Yeah. And your input and then the board's input. Yeah, I, I, I like the use of the yeah. parks and the open space and saying mm -hmm. natural. Mm -hmm. like, a lot of that looks great. My only feedback was yeah. I yeah, mean, and I, I think I would definitely recommend yeah. from my perspective you reconsider lot of stuff. And I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to make sure that we come back and say hey this is where we have to be from us. From the standpoint of making it a successful project for everybody from both your standpoint and i think one of the things that we're going to have to work through is understanding that lot size and what you you guys are comfortable with and what you're not going to be comfortable with and then ultimately the developer will have to run the numbers and make sure it works and we'll be honest with you guys and hopefully we'll have that back and forth and we'll say okay somewhere where it makes sense for both parties we can come up with a successful project can i ask one question can you scroll down just a little bit on the Right there. On the right side of this, you have a road that kind of ends into the next farm property. Is there future thoughts of that becoming part of a development or this development continuing yeah. in in like a phase two or three? Yeah, the thinking is, and we we haven't really even discussed future stuff yet. We we put a stub in into the east, into the west, and to the south. And we'll discuss if that makes sense for the future planning to, to have a stub there. We could, we'll, we, it may not end up there. It could end up even not being that direction. But the idea is that you want to build for future expansion if necessary. Not the developer has no plans at this time, but it's just good planning, planning okay. sense from that okay. standpoint. I just saw those opens and I wasn't sure if that was like. We usually require that they take them to the next property, so if they do develop. Okay. Oh. 
Uh, were there any? Uh, okay. I had another question. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask you. I was looking at your um, Tall Oaks development in Elgin because I wanted to see how these were priced because you mm -hmm. were talking about affordability. Um, okay. Would you give us an idea what the lot sizes are in that development? Because they're not visible on the website. I can see specific yeah. properties. Oh, but those are see, like, narrow. Just, the, those are about the same size. Those are about the same size and the same depth. Okay. I, I'd have to double check, and I worked on on I I worked I worked back in the original Tall Oaks, and then I worked through some of the revisions of Tall Oaks, and I believe the newest the older ones were bigger. Okay. I believe. This is on. But the new the new expansion I think called Phase sorry, like a Phase Three there, okay. and those lots are about the same size um, from from of what we're proposing here. So these these would be comparable to what you are. Yes, totally for sure. Generally, generally speaking. Okay. And don't I'm, count me on it. It might be yeah, 130 acres, 125, and it might okay. be something, but it's, it, it's okay. it, and yeah. So, assuming that the market remains steady, can you give us a very wide ballpark what you would anticipate these homes that you've given us here retailing for on this property? Because you did mention not only affordability, but also your your ability to effectively yeah and i don't know profit. if he's worked for that one of, the, one, of, like, one of the things he has to do talking is like three yeah sixes like somewhere in the middle like what, I, I, like what's your I, guess i don't expect it to, to drop down from change farm so that's why the point i was trying to make it's right. like we struggle against you know what i don't want to do is open up here and nothing happens because it really is price sensitive i mean it's amazing what ten thousand dollars are doing you know and you know these are the change farm i think is like i think 360 370 i don't know what the average is over there okay. i don't i would hope not to see a big bump because then we have a problem okay. um the like rich was going at i've basically got to take this whole site look at make some engineering assumptions and divide and then, them into yeah and then and this is what we're doing I how that works. Yep, I one of the things that yeah. might be might be nice to think about is they do the three product lines we need to we didn't really dive into it, but one of the product lines is going to be more of that active adult. So uh, we, it, you know, so there's going to be ranch homes and a lot more of them. And I think that's that is a product that is desperately, desperately needed in the market. Yeah. And so um, when you have a lot size that accommodates that, and you have that product for that buyer, mm -hmm. um, it it works out really well because it's you know it, it fits and it fits market. the the market. So maybe we need to, we'll just, we need to clarify, we need to explore, and we need to make sure that we pay attention to you, number one. And number yeah. two, we we get something across from Rosati's, because if I was living here, <laughs> awesome. And then you got the red ox right down the road that I can walk to, come on. All right, chicken daddy. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, so yeah. to answer my question, what are we looking, what's your best guess? Under six? Oh, yes. Under five? What are we, what's your... Well, I think in the yes. same farm, we're running from, from uh, 365 to... 418 is the four, lowest four, one. Yeah. Okay. Right, by the time you're in the options and everything, it's going to be more than that. I, I don't I don't really see it coming any lower just because of the, this whole length development but and not cost. But higher? Because, I mean, when you go from four to six, you've got a 50% increase. So, so that's they, why if they I'm, go too high, then nobody's going to buy it. I'm, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's no, there's plenty of folks cool. that want to, uh, you know, you know, max out the home. I think the biggest one was uh, the Raleigh 20, 29. But product wise, I mean, that's that's why we're here because because if if we lose 50 home sites, it's a much different price calculation, right? right? So that that's why you know, can we talk to you about a variety of widths? And we've got a couple of in built in there's, here now. Yeah, the rich can work a little magic. Maybe. There's also you know? the, there's also the attached homes that we're proposing, and I, nobody's we nobody's no, nobody's actually commented on that. But that that is one way to help with the density uh, level to get the units to to be able to, and it also okay. brings in more of an affordable rate. And we're proposing 58 of the of the attached product types, which is a very small small number. I can't really get much less, or they won't even do it. But it maybe there's a way we can, you know, we're we're just gonna have to get this to work. And one of the things to do that is might be creating the attached if you guys are amendable to that. Well, so, the reason, exactly. So we can talk about investing okay. the The reason I'm asking is because I'm pricing out what you're offering in Elgin at Talks. 
And I just want to know, like, is that the, the price that you anticipate for this particular development as it's conceptualized at this time? I or, think that's higher. Okay. That's yeah. what I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Again, because of just uh, the sunk cost. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was already a developed plan that they basically ended up purchasing. So okay. they got it at a discount rate. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're able to then keep that housing price down. And, and that's a market driven. You know, the, 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 the market pricing of the existing homes there is different. It's different wherever we go. Right. So we, we, we're, we're very scientific about doing the CMAs with the. When we go to buy our properties, right. so the, the hard that that's a hard part. So we have this discussion, and may, maybe we get some input from your team, from uh, Mo and Jay, and and we can, uh, you know, uh, we do a lot of tweaking possibly and to make it work. So the question is, you know, and these aren't the best pictures of it. Probably get better pictures later in this to show here, but uh, this is the that was um, the attached product. The, the mm -hmm. town yeah, so those are 1600 and uh, it's 18, 1610, I think 1840, all three car, three car, or uh, three, three bedroom, not three car, uh, three, three bedroom homes, so very nice town homes. So, mm -hmm. I, I a, uh, one question and just one yeah. thing to think about. Uh, when you're talking about mix of product, yeah. are, is any part of this neighborhood, because you just brought up active adult ranch style, is any part of this neighborhood being conceptualized on build to rent? No. Okay. Uh, no, uh, no, no, oh, uh, no. No, it's all for sale. Oh, uh, sure. I, I mean, right, we, that's not what Lenard does typically, but we do have it, we do have that division, and we're always open to that discussion if, if you are. So, no, I No, we're not. Okay. Uh, okay. No, yeah. we're not going to have this so I'm yeah. No, but no, no, what we're proposing is attached that's or detached uh, for some consideration for the concept. Yeah. It just seems odd to me. Where you have your attached homes, you have them up front. Yes. So you're going to have your most dense area where everybody drives through to get through. Does yeah, so if you go back to the plan, have that right yeah, now? It, 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 it's a good observation if you, if you can set back to the plan. We have, um, and of course, he's wanting to go through architecture. Their architecture is great, by the way. They've gone through a So, yeah, on the left side, side, one of your two entrances is actually through that entire dense population. Yeah, that dense it's, side. Does yeah. That so the I see yeah well we've got a our main entrance will actually be uh, the 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 right entrance and that would be dedicated mostly for the single family entrance now anybody can go in it but uh, certainly that would be for your um, uh, your single family side and then the attached side which is on the left that has its own entrance as well so that kind of breaks that up and now we only have one phase of the attached and we haven't really explored if it's feasible to do a second phase but really. The idea is you have a nice, uh, affordable, more affordable. Uh, the, the term affordable, is, I hate to even put that because your affordability, my affordability are different. But let's just say the lesser expensive of the products per square foot would be the attached. And we haven't explored about what makes sense if we expand that. And that might be an avenue to, to help with some so of is that. that is that something you think we can explore with the, with the team? Moving the maybe units no, away from even some just adjust, adjusting the max. I mean, I, mainly, you know, we, we want to just get a kind of you know a big a big picture. Like, um, a, are you are you okay with it? Or, yeah. or what's yeah. your initial I, I idea? I think that of the more than just our staff are going to have to weigh into that conversation. We have to have the fire department here because that's that's a concern that they've raised a few times yeah. with the buildings being attached to higher higher risk and. Fire spreading and that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> I said, if, if, I'm thinking if you're wanting to explore that conversation, the fire department's going to have to weigh in on it because you know, considering last weekend we just had one of them go up in flames. So they weigh in on everything we do. Yeah. yeah. And we certainly will look at the location of the townhomes and how they relate. The the one, and I I, I'm, I probably didn't express it really well, but the the nice thing about the way it's set up now is that you've got all three products. To, to help a successful project, one of the things is you want to start selling your storefronts right away. Mm -hmm. um, and you you open up three storefronts right away, and then you start to expand south. And if if, uh, if, if we have all three products up, then we can sell right away, which is nice. Like, and it's, it's a, such a small spot up in that north area. Let's say we move those to the south. I can't have a storefront up front to market the townhome because it's buried past the tributary and nobody can see it. 
So that makes it you want to have it up front. Well, the, 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 uh, respectfully, you want it up front so you can sell it. One of the things that's turned me off about the subdivisions along 72 is I don't want it there right. because I because after you sell what you sell, we have to stare at it. And so respectfully, I, I that's one of the things that we've talked about at the, on this board for a long time is the fact that there was some poor planning in some of our opinions about putting those right on 72 the way that they were. Um, and so where are you talking about? Tuscany Woods? Where I think it looks great. But consider that many people who buy a townhome versus the people who are buying a single family home, sure. you know, you, if you're going to pay that much more for a home, you probably don't want to write a the highway. Understood. Which I think that may be part of the consideration for putting yeah. it. Sure. I understand well, all that. I don't know. Yeah. It's just that I think that I think that I've never been a fan of it and I've never hidden it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with that and with that in mind, we certainly can make some adjustments. One of the things that we can do is, of course, make sure that there's landscaping and the appropriate mm -hmm. screen and stuff. Good council plan. Can I ask a question too? I mean, because I know it's it's a very long, narrow, and it comes mm -hmm. down and it's in the middle of farm fields to the one side and farm fields to the rest. Mm -hmm. And for like emergency vehicles, because we've got our police chief here as well as our fire chief, mm -hmm. is I mean, is is there any kind of a safety road that you know gets nubbed out a little bit for them to come in from a back way to save them time, or is yeah. that not something that's done? I I don't know. Well, and, and actually, that was another good observation. Not to rate your question, <laughs> but the the we have to have two access points across the tributary for that reason. If something gets stopped on one location on one entrance, okay. let's say a, an accident happens at one of the then the the that likelihood of 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 it happening at the second yeah. you know mm -hmm. <laughs> crossing at the same time is slim to none. You know that time it's, we bulldoze through the crash and get to the fire. So those are those two, but what I'm thinking is something at the very south end, something's happening, a fire breaks out. It's a matter of it's, it's a longer distance. If, if it was faster for them to go down Getzelman and just come yeah. east over. Yeah. And I'm just asking because I just, I don't know. Yeah. Does, crowd, does crowd have anything like that? I don't Sure. What will happen is if you, this is, there's a property that's about that wide and then it, there's another one that's a subdivision. What's going to happen in on the long term is another property eventually is going to come in and then those will connect. Um, certainly they wouldn't have the ability to connect with somebody else's yeah. property, unfortunately, in this case. But the safety concerns of having two accesses is really, really where it's at. Okay. You know, and that, that usually, as long as you have two accesses to the properties to the south, that, that would not be an issue. I think you did a uh, really nice job of actually, as you go down, mm -hmm. there's always a couple of ways to get in. Yeah. And small. future development will connect those. And of course, you'll see that connection as you develop mm -hmm. the community uh, forward. Thank you. Okay. Overall, I don't need it. So, <laughs> if you thought that you did, write that down. <laughs> it's just we have a lot of questions because, yeah. you know. People are going to ask us, and we have to be ready yeah, for that. Yeah, no, I like, definitely understand. We we just need to be sensitive to the to your concerns on the on the sizing of stuff. And then only thing on our side is we want to make sure that we're really crossing our T's and dotting our eyes and saying, hey, this is where the market is. This is what we can afford to do, and this is what we can we can kind of work through the process and and kind of come back with something that you know makes sense for both. So we have our work cut out for us. <laughs> well, I appreciate. I think that I think the rest of the board will agree. We appreciate you coming to talk to us mm -hmm. about evaluating Hampshire. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, Mr. Mayor, we would ask for consideration of a motion to approve the distribution of fire district impact fees of eighty two thousand four hundred and sixty eight dollars and ninety two cents to the Hampshire Fire Protection Fund. Um, any questions for our Chief Ehrman or Deputy Chief Larson about the request. Entertain a motion to approve on the distribution of fire district impact fees to the Hampshire Fire Protection District. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, concerns? Ms. Kirk, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Cole? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Ms. Palestri? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Porter? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Kiss? Zero. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming. Thank you. And with that, I'll just mention that the next six items really are bracketed. 
Um, so we, we have this measure, and I would suggest that we have discussion like we have in previous hearings, our previous meetings, on uh, all of the six items if you'd like to, or you can discuss them individually. I think at this point we discussed the whole thing together, and right, that's how we've always done it. So, so with that, we would ask for consideration of ordinances and resolution approving the following senior bureau subdivision bill. Uh, the first one being an ordinance approving annexation review of the senior bureau subdivision. Mr. Vasselli, can you give us thirty thousand, please? Um, yes. Thirty seconds. Mr. Mayor. Forty thirty seconds. Um, I'll be very brief. Um, as previously discussed, this is the annexation agreement that would govern the annexation of approximately fifteen acres of land currently in unincorporated King County for the development of the terms outlining the agreement with the construction, concrete yard, and commercial uses. As previously stated, during the public hearing, there will be no residential uses on. There are no contemplated residential uses at this time. And I believe the agreement says that there are no residential uses um, in the um, prospective land use plan. The agreement um, is executed to facilitate the annexation and development of property in compliance with local codes and laws. Um, the annexation and zoning upon the passage of it, this is all governed in the agreement. On the passage of the uh, annexation ordinance, the property immediately goes into the local zoning district pursuant to Illinois state law. It will then be rezoned if other uh, ordinances are adopted into a heavier zoning district, M1 and B3 respectively. As stated before during the public hearing, uh, the infrastructure, road utilities, and stormwater management systems will be done at the expense of the owner. Um, the owner is responsible for all applicable connection and impact fees as applicable. And the term of all annexation agreements for 20 years in the state of Illinois. They are required to comply with all applicable laws, and they will indemnify the village for any and all risks, harms, or claims. Um, Mr. President, is that satisfactory? Fantastic. Thank you. That is all in the um, very brief memorandum that's in the order. <laughs> Will any members of the board have questions, comments, or concerns? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions and then just one comment for Mr. Vaselli. Uh, we need to add McHenry throughout all of those. Just double check it because I've highlighted a couple of spots where I noticed. Uh... So I'm looking at, for example, the annexation ordinance. And it says we will, of course, and we can make that um, adopted throughout. But if you look at the title and in the ordaining clause, the village of Hampshire, Kane, and McHenry County, in Illinois, we will make that. And you know, page 25 of the recitals in the packet. On page 23, it has village of Hampshire, Kane, and McHenry counties. On page 25 under recitals, it says, which includes the, the zone <laughs> ordinances for the village of Hampshire, County of Kane, State of Illinois. So I'm just asking that we double check. Yeah, we'll make sure that it's in there. Um, and I think that is actually the title of the code as it sits right now. So we'll have to, so the title of the code, the zoning code is from the old code. We have not changed the title. So technically it is still that. We will, that's it, fine. yeah, and that's why All right. um, we just need to catch up the code to that. I just know that we, it's come up a couple of times. So when I saw that. Sure, I, sure. Thank you for that. I, <laughs> Uh, the two questions I have. One, uh, I remember that, uh, and I appreciate that the owner of the property did this because not many had, and it was a great standard, which was a water study was done. Um, and there was some about the, the ability for that property or certain areas of the property to withstand a specific weight. Um, and I guess one of the questions I have is, I know part of this discussion is going to be for I'm mean, using the wrong term, I understand it here. <laughs> Special use permits, whatever it may be. To be able to have gravel roads that lead back in a gravel parking lot, is there a reason why we wouldn't want that paved? And here's the two reasons I asked. One, because of the water study. But two, also, this is going to abut a school. And so a gravel road is going to cause throughout some of the season dust and debris to come up as trucks are coming and going. And I understand this isn't a construction yard where things are being built, I totally get that. It's not a concrete yard. I, I appreciate the earlier presentation. But why wouldn't we require this to be paid? Okay. And I'm going to turn that over to the 
to develop at some point, but it is also, and I'm going to jump around a little bit, trustee, so you'll have to indulge me on that. There is a sunset provision with regards to that, um, and I believe it is in, it's a three-year sunset provision, and I'll turn that over to the trust, or the trustee, you are the trustee, to the engineer of the developer to address that, but I thought that it had to do with the construction and how they are going to phase the construction of the project. Uh, yeah. Um, our, the circumstances are that the, the building two other lots, the one lot on the side. Um, what we expect long term is that these we, internally there's going to be a road connection. It could very well be that within the first three years that road gets moved. And it gets moved so that the other lots can access the same way in and out. And if, if you look at how those lots are laid out, that was the intention was to be in a situation that we didn't pave a road and then move it in three years. Um, we figure within three years we'll have that answer and, and then that road will either be paved where it's at or it'll be moved to the new location. So lots two and three will also be able to have access to use to access to that road line. So long story short, you're saying that the, the gravel exception is only there for three years, three years. period. And then after a three years time, three years time, it has paid. to be paved. And so many questions, do we pave it in that location? Or does IDOT tell us they want to move it, you know, farther away or well, I can't go farther away, but closer to the intersection so, so the other lots can be used. Is the variance then only for that strip, that roadway strip? For that strip and then up to the, the, the so property where the property for lot three is, and then the building and on the concept, the building and all of the parking around it, that would all be paved. Ultimately, that will all be paid. No, I mean, does this variance? The, make the variance that? allows us to work with that during that three year time period. I ultimately, it will all be paid within three years. Sorry, my, my question was very specific. And, no, is, I understand. Is How the variance just that road, or is it the road and all of the parking lot? Because the reason we're being told the variance is being asked for is because that, and I understand this, that road may be, and so if you pave it, now it's really expensive to move that, or you can't move or it. Not. That part I totally get. The parking lot in lot three around the building, why would that have to be gravel? We can pave that parking lot in front of the building community, but right there, right before you come into the first parking spots, and that, 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 so that, that will have to be gravel for, you know, in case it has to move. In case it has to move, I'm foreseeing that within uh, three years, I'm going to make a decision what's going to happen with the rest of the property. I mean, it's going to stay retail commercial or somebody comes and buys it. I mean, we're going to have the water and, you know, all utilities on it. So if somebody does not buy it at that point, I mean, I'm not going to put it on the market for sale. Somebody comes and buy, wants to buy it, then I consider it selling. Otherwise, I'll develop the rest of it. Okay, so you would be okay if it was that gravel for that part. Yeah. But then when you got to the lot three property, yeah. when you're developing for your offices and yeah. for the yard, that the pavement would start there and be yeah. paved. That would be okay. That'd be okay. 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 And we also do have, I, I understand your concern about the dust and everything else. We do also do have um, a foot fencing going up. Yeah, yeah. the road part, I wasn't so concerned. Yeah. It's that it's where you're it's consistently cool. going to yeah. have all the equipment because it backs right to an elementary yeah. school. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Sure. Then this may be for Mr. Khan. Um, why are we recommending M1 versus a B3? Because in the B3, when I took a look through that, it specifically calls out construction and contractor offices. Uh, so I'm just curious why the decision is M1 versus a, a B3 for that lot three. I truly cannot speak to that. I wasn't here when it went through. When it went through. When I went through or the developer or anybody who can speak to why that is not making the classification. Initially, we asked for actually, uh, I believe it was M2, and the decision was made that M2 was too intense, but that M1 with the restrictions of the special use, because your special use helps helps control what can happen there, that, that made more sense. And that's how it got to that level. But, I mean, this has actually been going on for a year. And, and, you know, our intention was to try to work with the village for that, but that's the recommendations that came about a year ago from the village to say, make it M1, not M2, not the more intense use. 
step it down and do this And that that was the uh, well of the planning zone. Was was B3 or the contractor or construction office usage ever considered in planning and zoning? I don't recall that. I'm not sure that this would be permitted with the under the law under B3. Chair? Yeah. I, I don't believe that you'd be able to park the vehicles outside and everything under B3. Understood. Okay. Any other questions? Can I ask what uh, your and, and I know the lot one and, and two are not going to be developed right now, and the concentration is on lot three. Um, but for lot two, what are you what are, what's the concept that you're thinking at that point? Um, actually, it's looking at a restaurant initially. Okay. That's the lot two is a smaller one, correct? Right. Okay. And yeah, because I I understand it kind of it comes along Lake Street. And at least 20, and then it moves them across. So, I mean, there's a there is a very big, you know, area across the big area. Yeah. And it's by a school, and, and, and it's heavily trafficked. So, right, I mean, it, it's going to be a commercial use. We just okay. haven't been approached by anybody yet. To okay, extent. but we, 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 I don't think there was any time that we thought it would be anything but commercial. I, I okay, can't. so it's kind of like a Restaurants, beauty shops, nail shops, like a it, strip it, mall it, type it thing. Up, it ends up being a strip mall that way. Um, it could be, you know, offices, gasoline. I, I mean, yeah. my, my gut reaction is, is you're probably looking more towards some sort of, you know, gas station, whatever. I suspect if cases awesome. and Thornton's weren't so near here, they'd both be knocking on the door. Yeah. Um, but I know they're close enough that I don't see that happen. Okay. And then with a lot, like for lot three, that, or two, sorry. Um, as you said, envision a restaurant. It could be a big restaurant. It could also be a four-story building. Oh, well, sure, but if it was that, we have to come and you know that goes. And I, I don't know what your height regulations are off the okay. top of my head, but three I, stories. Okay. Three stories is you know, okay. I would think four okay. stories is pretty high on this location. The doctor's office. I mean, it could be pretty much anything we there. We expect it to be fast food and gasoline because because it's it's actually between four schools. Okay. Like Mild four schools. Okay. And that's where we that was the original intent when it came, and that was what excited even some of the residents in the Lakewood subdivision and the fact that there might be something there that would offer them some services that they wouldn't have to either go to Huntley or downtown for a toll. And 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 by the way, we still think that's the most likely. Okay. Okay. Is um there's still a house then that is south of both lots two and three? A There's a house in that square that's not going to be that. Okay. So, I mean, is, have there been any difficulties with them? Are they objecting to anything I mean, um, for the planning and zoning to, hearing? He did come to the planning and zoning hearing and wasn't happy with the fact that he's about to be the little house in the middle of the town. Okay. But I, I don't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the story goes, as I understand it, he had the option to buy the property and chose not to. I mean, and that's right. You, you were very clear in that when you first came to speak to us. That's correct. So that property we purchased from the state, it was on a, a from, state. From an estate. An estate. Okay. So um, we, the property went on for sale, and then they took it out of the market. Two the family members decided who wanted to buy it. So everybody had the opportunity to buy it. Um, I brought it for, bought it from one of the brothers that was taking care of the mom. And then attorneys pretty much spread out the money because nobody could come together to see how they can buy. So, you know, but everybody had the opportunity to buy it. I mean, okay. and it was priced pretty fairly. Is that house unincorporated right now? Uncorporated. Okay, it is. And that was that house in the front is actually a second house that is, there's another foundation that, that you guys don't see. From probably in the 70s or something, they got knocked down. Apparently, from what I heard, a truck drove through it, knocked it down, and the father built that house right there. So that is a slap on great. So there's two foundations there when we finally decided to take this down. There is an existing foundation there that needs to be removed that was never built before. Okay. Um, your six and eight foot fencing that you talked about in there. Will that be on the south side of the property as well to no, no, no. offer for that? The school? For both the school, the school and, and for that him. House. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so would that be the eight foot fencing yep. on that side? All the way through, through that property. Or maybe ho hopefully he comes to turn and he wants to set. Okay. 
Okay. I have a question in the agreement on page 36 in our packet. <coughs> Bicycle path. Why are we requiring a construction of a 10 foot bicycle? Because we want to have a bike path all throughout the community, and there's a bike path down in, in Oakstead as well as in front of the school. So this will bring the bike path all the way to the corner, and then eventually it'll connect up to the bike path in front of the high school. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a bike path all the way along Big Timber. Okay. And we're doing the same thing on 72, we talked about before on 77. Okay, thank you. We have the context of that. I'm like the same way. I think you know this is already by like kept down by the three school. Uh, another question was um, timing because we did have the original hearing that was on October 23rd, and now we're five months later. Is there a reason why? I mean, you're just kind of working on things. Or? There was a lot to review for engineering, okay. and that took a fair amount of time. That engineering, I believe, is all completed now, and that was okay. Okay. We we actually tried to get here back at Christmas, but we didn't. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, on on page thirty seven for the vegetation and light growth, um, there's a statement that says the owner, in the event the owner removes trees, the owner shall be required to replace trees in accordance with the village code. I know that you've already done a lot of good cleanup on that land, and I say good, it's it's a judgment type thing, but there was a lot of overgrowth and brush and things like that. There are still some old growth trees on that property. Is your intent not to remove any of those at this time? So we're we're planning to remove whatever is needed to to get to the pro to the project. Okay. Um, if you see the uh, grading plan with the the proposed pond, there's going to be a lot of them that they're already dead that it's going to be cleared out. Okay. But until we got an official permit for all this, I didn't want to do no more work because I mean, now we're going working with the city, trying to annex into the city. I mean, we did all this before it was even annexed to the city. Yeah. And from day one, when I approached to the city, I want to work with the city to annex into the into town. That's why I put the, the building all the way in the back, you know, and keep everything else. I mean, could somebody else come and develop and make it everything commercial probably, but you know, I'm I'm in a different business that is not that development like Leonardo was here today. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to get my shop and hopefully that would bring somebody else more intense to trying to develop the rest of the property. No, and I just, I brought it up because I thought mm -hmm. clearing it out and actually really opened that mm -hmm. property up from the, there was a lot of, yeah. you know, because you took it out, undergrowth and just, there was, there was quite a bit. I mean, out there, yeah. We'll call it. Um, I had only asked because if this goes through tonight, then any of the trees, as I'm reading this, and staff, please correct me, any trees you do remove will have to have something replanted. That is correct. That, that is an agreement that I have done with the village. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other concerns? Comments? Thank you. Thank you. I will entertain a motion approving an ordinance. Uh, approving an annexation agreement for the Tina Hero subdivision. Second. Questions, comments, concerns? Just one question on the procedure. We're gonna, I know we've got to go through all these votes, and within the annexation agreement, it assumes, it state, makes statements of assumption that the zoning is going to pass and the special right. use is going to pass and everything else is going to pass. Um, if one of those doesn't pass, for some reason. Does that nullify the annexation agreement? Does it nullify it? Um, there is a severability clause and so they've already signed, they've already executed on the terms of set forth on here. So we would essentially have to, if one of them doesn't pass, we'd have to go back and I don't want to say renegotiate, but say that this provision is not going to be part of the agreement if it doesn't pass. Okay, and can any of the subsequent ones be changed and passed? I'm thinking specifically on the special use of the gravel, where the petitioner had just said they're they're okay doing gravel up to the property line and then paving the rest. The special or the variance right now allows for gravel throughout the whole thing. And I believe that when we get to that variance, and I assume that that's what you're thinking. That's specifically what I'm talking about because in this it states that we 
And I am sure that if we went to the developer and his attorney and said that, would you agree to that as a condition of the variance, he'd say, okay. Because yeah. <laughs> they're very happy to agree to that condition when we get to the variance. Um, okay. If there are any others, so or can change some things. Absolutely. Okay, that's absolutely. We'll add it to a recital as a whereas clause in that variance. If there are, are any other ordinances that, while we're talking about this, that someone has a concern with, and I'm not saying speak now or for hold your peace, but probably best to address them now because it is kind of a breathing document with all of these different tentacles. So let's get it out of the way now, clear this up, and know what we need to do going forward. That would allow for a much better vote and roll call. Um, so, I, need. so I would say the paving is, is for the last one would be the best, right? That's correct. So what, can I, I would entertain a motion adding the paving right. restrictions. We would add um, a recital in the beginning, whereas um, the, the village has imposed a condition, or I'm just spitballing here, so excuse me, the village has imposed a condition um, whereby the front of the yard, that's got really are more familiar um, with the property layout. I, I, so. I would say, if you want to say that the variation only applies to the drive, the road from um, the roadway access, where there's a parking be required to be paid. Okay. Yeah, that's great. When we get there, let's address it. Um, because the variance, I'd much rather address it there because that variance is going to drop off. The agreement will presumably be in existence for 20 years. The variance um, sunsets in total after 36 months. Okay. So we should just leave it in that part. Um, one question, too, then on the zoning itself. I'm only asking this because it directly abuts an elementary school. Yes. Uh, Mr. Tin Tinero has been very upfront, has done water studies, has been a really good partner with the village about this is what I'm going to use it for, helped explain some of the misconceptions that people thought it was going to be an Ozinga style concrete area, and it's not, it's more of a yard work, and he explained his business. So I really appreciate that. If he decides to sell that property, it's still zoned M1. And zoned as M1, is there any restriction of what can happen on that property should it be sold uh, to somebody else? Are we saying it's only for this use case, an M1, or is it open to any M1 use case at any time should the property be sold? So it's open to, it's the, it goes back to the M1 zone. Any restrictions that are set forth within the annexation agreement that had restrictions would apply runs against the land. It's an impertinent restriction against the use of the property. But no, it reverts to the M1 district. It doesn't sunset with a sale or anything like that. The map amendment. But there's no restriction saying it's an M1 use for this specific use case. There is no restrictions in the agreement or in the ordinances that allow it just for this one right. use. So it's an it's open M1. It's an M1. For yeah, anything. it's a map amendment. When we do our map next year, it will show up as M1. Okay. I appreciate the clarification. Sure. I have just two more questions, and that's it for all this. Um, on, on page 4, 28 of our packet, just a general question for affidavit of service. It listed Fire Protection District for uh, the Public Library, the Hampshire Township, and Community School District 300. And I was just curious as to why the Park District wasn't included for that. It won't change. The Park District boundaries won't change okay. this annexation. And, and the reality is we gave notice to lots of people that aren't actually entitled to notice. Okay. When the, the purpose of annexation hearing notices is to let people know their boundaries might change. Okay, so, right, so for instance, if Big Timber was a township road, all right, it's not, but if it was a township road and you annex up to it, you have to annex the whole road with it, all right? So then townships are very concerned because suddenly they don't have a road that they just built or they built over the years. Um, so that's why townships usually want to know, that's why highway commissioners know. We gave them all notice, even though we knew it wasn't going to change their boundaries. Okay. They didn't. We, we weren't actually required to give notice. We, we figured it was easier to give everybody notice, let us know what we're doing, let, let them know what we're doing. Um, but, but they didn't. It's not It's not a, a requirement to give notice when it's not changing their boundaries. Okay, so moving to the next page, then recordings and notices for annexation. That one didn't have the schools for the parks. Um, for E. Page 
Oh, it's page seven of the agreement and 31 of our packet, but um, it's you know, yeah. under uh, section four E. It just uh, <coughs> it, it just reads because it listed a whole bunch, you know, fire protection district, public library district. Uh, it talks about the affidavit of service properly filed, which it's fine, but it just it didn't have schools and parks on that one, but it had school but on the other it's one. It's not, again, for the same problem. It, okay. The school didn't, this doesn't change any of the school practicing okay. authorities. It doesn't change the school's boundaries. It doesn't, okay. right, so that's that's why it wouldn't be done. Okay. And then my last question um, deals with the uh, designs that we have for the uh, street lights and street signs, et cetera. Um, and so I guess that's page 72 of our packet. I don't know. That'd be page 31. That came actually from your ordinance. Okay. Well, the only thing I'm asking then is just are those lights then what you're going to put up on that? Because it becomes like a little island for you because you're now designing what's going to be the road and things well, like that. So your ordinance requires us to comply with certain street signs and roads. Okay. And, and we adopt this this board for action schematic okay. is from your ordinance. Okay. So we have to wherever so they wherever staff ordinance requires, here's where the street light needs to go to let everybody know it's going in. We okay. follow this construction to do. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, mean, I suppose that's, you could change your ordinance, but I no, that's it, fine. I was just trying to figure out if you were going to be doing that throughout the property, or if I understand the stop sign that where that's going to have to be, but just curious then if you were having to. Um, well, those internal roads are designed to be private, but but even as private roads, you would still want to make certain they look like a a municipal street, so that you don't end up with. Um, well, it doesn't need to be a drag strip for anybody. It doesn't doesn't help you know the future developers. Uh, I'm sure that you have agreements with private shopping throughout town um, with your police for your police department to be able to manage traffic flows in those places if they are necessary. I would see no nothing different here. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So. Um, we have a motion and a second. We ask questions, and I realize as we were talking about this, we didn't add the fact that in the ordinance we were going to go through and make sure that there were, it said McHenry County is necessary. Do we need to amend the motion, or is that just something that's understood by council? No, it is. I, there are no references to McHenry County. There are no omitted references to McHenry County in this ordinance so so that being said moving forward is it just understood by county that your or council that you're going to go through it and add mchenry county where necessary in, I the, event, in, the, motion. in the event there is such an omission we'll make sure that it's fair enough okay so we have a first and a second on approving the annexation agreement uh, any other questions comments or concerns mr clerk can you call the roll please mr matt aye mr palestine aye mr robinson aye Ms. Foden. aye mr kelly aye mr cole aye Yes, Next, I will entertain a motion approving the annexation of the Tina Harrow subdivision. Okay. Okay. Questions, comments, or concerns? What's the, what's the difference of this versus what we just passed? Excellent question, Justin. So there are different provisions with regards to this. The authorization set forth in the annexation agreement ordinance allows us to execute it, and it's governed by a different section of the statute. The ordinance annexing is the actual action that we take to bring this into the village and that's governed by section 7.1 or 7-1-1 of the Alamo municipal code it's a slight difference um i prefer and i think most municipal lawyers prefer to do those separately some do it all combined as one i think that's not a comprehensive way to do it um so this is the actual action of bringing this into the village the last one approves the agreement to allow for the bringing in Thank you. So we have a first and a second. Do we have any other questions, comments, or concerns? Um, Ms. Clark, can you call roll, please? Ms. Palestrini? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Fodor? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Cole? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Motion passes to zero. Next, we I will entertain a motion approving a resolution approving the preliminary and final plat of subdivision for the Tino Hero, Tina Harrow subdivision. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, or concerns? 
Ms. Kirk, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Slaughter? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Cole? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Ms. Palestine? Aye. Motion passes at zero. Next, we have the, uh, the uh, I will entertain a motion to, uh, motion to entertain, I would like to entertain a motion, oh my gosh, <laughs> approving the ordinance, approving the map amendment for rezoning for the Tina Harrow subdivision. Oh my goodness. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, or concerns? The question, this is the rezoning to an M1 map. M1 and B3. Correct, per the map. Correct, so okay. this is the map amendment. Yeah, so I do have one question on the, just to make sure we're, we're done, our eyes are crossing our teeth on page 52, the packet of zoning review application. Do we need to have that amended because it asks for rezoning from F County District to M1? And once it's annexed in, it's actually E1, Estate 1, not F County? No, we do not. It's an excellent question. It will be preserved in the minutes your comment. But the technical zoning is now, when they filed their application, was in that district. Okay. And so it's it's a nuance, right? Because now it's it's a little bit different because... So we're not at risk of anything? We're not at risk of anything at all. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Khan, did you find the regulations whether or not this type of usage is allowed in B3 versus, or is it just M1? So B3 allows the construction or contracted office. So that'd be simply like an office, a business office. It wouldn't allow for any outdoor storage of vehicles or anything heavier than just a business office. Okay. Any other questions? I, I see Mr. Kelly perplexed. I'm not perplexed, I'm just concerned. If I, if I may, and I know it's out of order for me to talk. No, no, you're, you're when we first here. started out, they told us we had to do M2. And then we can't, that's how this M1 came about. It's like if we do an M1 with a special use, it's better. I, and so we, we that, that's why like I want to be. I want to be clear, I have absolutely no concern of Mr. Tinero's usage of that property, the proposal, what he's looking to do, and what's happening there. Um, I'm just trying to future proof 20 years down the road, he's That's super successful and retires and sells the property <laughs> because all the community around there, 2,000 homes, says, you know, a restaurant would be really good right here. Be a lot of money for this property, or whatever may happen. Right? Um, I'm only that's what I'm thinking about, not specific to your use or or the, uh, Mr. Tina Harrow's. And I apologize if I'm right. I'm sorry, I do it too. Um, and the last thing my count of hours. Uh, <laughs> I have like this isn't about that project. This is about what happens when the next people buy the project and the school, the elementary school of. of directly abuts this. And eventually, if you look, the school's there now, but on the other side of the school, those will be homes go along that whole property. And so that's my only, you're seeing my my look at sure. reservation. That's what my reservation is. I have no reservation whatsoever about this. If I could, also on we're not again too. Yeah. If, if I can answer that, when Josh was here, Josh was the one who told us M2 is what this can be. Then uh, the, the board and the consensus that we got back was, it's M2, and we like his business, M2, but there's other businesses in M2 that we don't like. Correct. And so we want you to downgrade it to an M1. That's how we got to the M1 with the variance. So we did, that's, that's, that's the whole path of getting to where we're at. And I think that's why you were comfortable before, or I don't want to speak for you specifically, but we were told that we were comfortable with the M1 use if he ever does leave and it turns to uh, something else. That's the history of it. That was a discussion at the planning circuit. Exactly. Okay. Um, my only last question, because we weren't there, and unfortunately, um, Mr. Morocco isn't here, so Mr. Vassell, you yes. have planning and zoning. What was the reasoning given for the one dissent vote? I can speak to that, actually. Commissioner Duval was, uh, I think I pronounced it. It was a dissenting vote. Um, I went through the transcript for it. There was no specific for the special use, um, but for the variance, it was uh, she didn't believe that the app included the hardship or the gravel parking. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. I, and I agree with that statement. By the way, she actually talked to us afterwards 
after the meeting was over. And that was a concern was that, you know, what's the hardship? Well, the hardship is, do you really want to build two roads? Um, that, and I know it's a financial hardship, and I know that if you look at the details, you'll see, well, that's partly caused by us. Well, it's partly caused by us because we're trying to make certain that we make it available for the next, the next lots. Yeah. Um, and I think you would pass muster in the analysis of variances and hard shifts in this good moment. I'm not concerned about that, Jake. I just was curious because that was one of the notes, but there wasn't any detail about it, but finding it back. So appreciate the detail. Thank you for asking that question. I want to cut somebody. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So uh, next we have the uh, ordinance. I will entertain a motion. No. Nope. Nope. There's a motion on the floor. You failed me. I don't have a process for the reason. It's not the I thought that was the clerk is for the minutes. So if we need to make another motion. Yeah. Okay. okay. I made a motion and I have that for the plan. Okay, you made motion and one of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. I failed you. <laughs> and that'll be reflected in a minute. <laughs> I'll make sure of that. I failed again. <laughs> She's literally writing it down. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Is that water? Is that a beer? Water. You still water. Sounds like that. Liquid down. Go ahead, Mike. Mrs. Fodor. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Cole. Aye. Mr. Matt. Aye. Mrs. Palestrini. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Yes, I done. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion approving the special use for the Tina Harris subdivision. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, concerns? The special use is specifically for what? Yeah. Which one wanted special use? I understand. The use of the term storage of vehicles outside would be the special use. Okay, so it's specifically for storage of vehicles outside. Okay, thank you. And the gravel? So we have first and second. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Ms. Burke, can you go roll, please? Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Cole? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Mr. Palestrini? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Spoder? Aye. Mr. Pell? Open at him, 6 0. Thank you. He's going to select somebody up here. Yeah. He is. Uh, next, we have uh, I'll entertain a motion approving the variance for the Tina Harrow subdivision with the um, caveat that it's just, that this just pertains to the roadway and not the parking area. So, is that is that correct? Before we move, yeah, just the internal roadways. So you would, for example, if we could all look at page one seventeen to one thirty five of our packet, page three of the variance. If you read that, um, you know, third full recital or preamble or whereas clause, um, there is the petition request of variance to allow gravel surfacing for off the street parking exclusively for the internal roadways. We could add in this document language exclusively for the internal roadways, which I believe is what the petitioner's council is fine with. Um, we could also add it. So we would remove that, whereas the petitioner requested variance to allow gravel surfacing for off street parking at the property. We would say, I would like to change it to, whereas the petitioner, whereas the petitioner seeks a variance to allow gravel surfacing for off street parking exclusively for the internal roadways at the property. I want to change it instead of requests to seeks. No, sorry. I just want a clarification on this because it's it's not meant for parking. That roadway is gravel, which is a thoroughfare, not where they're parking vehicles. And it's the variance, as, as the gentleman shared, and I completely understand, is so that they can move a road in the future should they need to. It is not for off-site parking. There's no guarantee. The correct term would be drive aisle. That's 
whatever the term yeah. is, but I by saying off street parking, we're not right, saying you can of park on parking, that gravel drive aisle or just straight all the other to allow gravel servicing for exclusively for the internal roadways of the town or drive aisles and roadways of the town. We'll leave it up to the to counselors to figure it out just as long as we understand the intent. Okay. Good. Yeah. So we're essentially conceptually what we're doing is we're changing the term. We're scoping or pruning the word zoning relief such that it's only the drive aisles or internal roadways as we define them in the annexation agreement, which I think Trustee Kelly is what you're <clears throat> you want and desire. And most of or most importantly, what you want. Second, most importantly, what petitioners agreed to. There? Yeah. Right. So long as we're agreed to however it needs to legally be said, in in common person's terms, the part they drive on to get to the property, gravel, that's what this is. They are on the property and they would be parking things or it's a part of where the building is or any of that. Hey, we're already locked. Okay. We've got that covered. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> no, I I yeah. need someone to make the motion. I made the motion. And then we have a second? No. Second. Perfect. Thank you. Any other comments or concerns? Mm -hmm. Ms. Clerk, mm -hmm. can we call the roll, please? Mr. Cole? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. Ms. Palestrini? Aye. Mr. Robinson? Aye. Ms. Fodor? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Great job, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the village. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. Been around here for a long time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have staff reports. We have um, we have the Hampshire Police report in front of you, and then we also have the streets report. Chief Ann is waiting with bated breath to lead us through the police report. If there are questions, now, any questions? For I have one question for the chief. Um, last night though, it went really well. Back. Yes, we had about, about 30 people came through. Oh, really? that's great. It was phenomenal, yeah. All, all evening long, from 5 to 8 o'clock. And we have another one planned in, um, uh, it's about three weeks now, with the um, with the chiefs from District 300 and and uh, adjoining communities. So we're going to bring all the police chiefs in and do another open house. Probably in the afternoon. But yeah, we're real successful last night. Yeah. Sorry, we couldn't be there. <laughs> Any yeah. questions for the chief about his reports? Yes. Fantastic. On this lovely graphic, because I don't have the numbers, but yeah, I the one that oh, looks like five. 127 out of 135, sorry. Um, can you give me an example of what King County Court Services might um, call you for? That, okay, so this what this chart was is I, I put it in there and I actually should have just said I was going to speak to this because it's something different from what I put in before, but. Um, <laughs> I received a report from Kane, from Kane Com mm -hmm. um, regarding their dispatching services and um, the demand of the different um, agencies throughout the county. So actually what this is, is this is the demand that each one of the agencies listed on that chart causes to Kane Com. Mm -hmm. But what I, the reason I put it in there is because I wanted to illustrate that it's just a good illustration of where we sit with um, with our neighboring communities as far as um, our calls for service level and um, you know and what our demand is um, you know, in the King County services overall. So we're um, you know we're basically tied with um, Pingree um, for the two highest level of call, levels of call for service for all the communities in the area. So are we the slightly darker green at seven percent or yes. the lighter green at four? We're the seven percent. Okay. 7% and then Ping, Pingree is also at 7%, but our calls for service is just a tad higher than theirs. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? Because Pingree has, a, per the last census, whether it's still old or not, about three or 3,500 more people than they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. It's, an, I, it's a discussion I'll have to have with the chief over there to find out what you know what's driving their calls for service. Um, do, their, do their calls go down because they're hiring additional officers? There's more cops on the street? Less backup. There, well, I mean, that could for for this number here that I could actually drive numbers higher because um, this number includes all calls for service, which also includes self initiating activity. Yeah. Well, just to point out, 
of the 75,083 police related incidents, the 1% difference is 750 different incidents. So that's a large number. That's just the math. So. If you look at the next, if you look at the next slide, it shows the actual numbers yeah. um, for the differences between the, between. So the is that all of 2024? This is 2023. Oh, 2023. Yeah. So that's an entire year. Okay. Wing. Yes, I think they do. I just read the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for this. Does anyone have any other chief questions for the chief? I will say one one thing that I would like to just mention quickly. I, I'm glad you brought up the open house that we had that was successful. But uh, the other thing is um, body worn cameras. Um, I can I can officially say that we've had our first complaint against an officer that was completely quelled by the body worn cameras. Um, uh, you know, we had a complaint come in um, to file i mean to sign an official complaint against an officer for uh attitude behavior um the way that he handled the call and when um when we invited the, this complainant to sit down with us and watch the, the body worn camera video of both the in-person interaction and also a telephone call that was um that, that took place he reported both of those under the law and um she actually got up from the table and thanked us for or apologized for wasting our time and wanted other So I mean it's I think it goes both ways. So they protect the officers, but they also protect the community. So um, that was just a good example. So what happens with a complaint in that regard when they, when they have a signed complaint and well, then they walk she, she she didn't actually sign the complaint yet. Okay. Um I, you know, I, I haven't really got a temperature from the King County State's Attorney's Office as far as whether they're they willing to, um, you know, go after those complaints that file false reports. I, I would think in today's environment, that's probably not likely to happen. No, I'm not concerned about that. I'm concerned about what happens to the, like, does this, does this complaint go on the officer's record? Um, um, there's no complaint file. Yeah, there that's was. What, okay, that's what I'm asking. Right, yeah. Okay. There was, if if there was a complaint filed, I mean, technically there was a complaint. I mean, she can't. We, we have like emails and that sort of thing, but sure. we we document that and we document the there was you know the the outcome. You know, so it's not it doesn't go against the officer at all. But we also want to keep track of people that come in to you know to file complaints that are frivolous or um, unfounded altogether. And this was this one was definitely unfounded altogether. Chief, I mean. I from the situation you just described, is that kind of like um, the person was um, their their understanding of what happened and their recollection was one thing, and when they saw that camera, they thought differently. The interesting thing about this particular one is they didn't even watch the video. As soon as they found out there was video, they oh, uh, they thought they were sitting down with you and saw it, and then said that's, sorry for wasting. That's what we invited to happen, but it didn't happen. Okay. All right, that's different. That's different. Okay. Thank you for indulging that. Yes. I, I do have one additional thing. Your your photos, and thank you for adding those at the end, made me think about it. I just want to thank you and your staff. Um, as temperatures warm up, we have seen on social media, a lot of times people's beloved pets are getting out and escape and run around. And oftentimes your officers are helping to capture them but then hold them to try to find the, the family that they go back to. When just as easily could call animal, you guys could call animal, can't count animal control, they'll come pick them up, take them. I just want to say thanks for showing the care for the community when that happens, because I would say the vast majority of the time I see it on there, they're reunited with their family. So just, it's something like that's above and beyond. So thanks to the, the department for doing that, because Thank you. It seems to happen a lot lately, and it's usually happy endings that they get back to the family. So thank you for. And as a resident, thank you for saying thank you to him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Chief Payne, um, we have a the soliciting uh, ban, if you like, has been lifted, or taken away in, in the village. Here is. Are you seeing any? Increase in calls to the police department uh, with residents' concerns um, about people that are soliciting. 
No, not at this point. Oh, this time. No. I've noticed in the last day, it's just in the last day or two, big increase in uh, people on Facebook and whatever about solicitors. Some people are saying, hey, we've got people knocking on our doors. Mm -hmm. As people know that there's people soliciting, but soliciting here. And uh, my concern is, obviously you're not seeing it at your end, that's fine. Uh, what are we doing to notify all residents that this has actually been taken care of? Yeah, so we've discussed this at length and, and our, our opinion at this point in time is that we don't we don't want to post a sign that says we're open for solicitation. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and I doubt that there's too many people watching tonight that would, that would you know that, that would take you know we hear that message right now. We so we don't want to announce that we're open for solicitation. But what I've been doing is as those complaints come in, um, either me or or one of my you know one of my people will call the person back, the, the complainer back and inform them of the change in the statute and you know, and, and or not the change in the statute, but this the change in uh, interpretation of the law and, and and why we've changed it, and and the, you know, and then I will give them some instruction on you know you could post a personal you no know, solicitation sign at your home that's enforceable. Um, however, you know the the broad ordinance for the village is not. Um, Sorry, Chief. Can either you or, or Mr. Vaselli speak more to that? Because I think there may be a lot of people that don't know what you're talking about. And the fact that the board didn't pass or change anything about solicitation. Correct. Um, and when they potentially watch this or, or catch up to say, well, wait a second, what do you mean you guys changed the no solicitation? It may be a good thing to just clarify what you're talking about, whether you'd like to or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can do it and you can supplement yeah. anything. Um, so we do, we did not change the code with regards to the ban on no solicitation. We are enforcing differently. Let me start off, Mr. Kelly, or Trustee Kelly, with the most important thing. Nothing we are doing prohibits anyone from putting up a no solicitation sign on their own door. And then they can, if they don't want solicitors to come there, they can put it on there. And then that, that has binding effect. Um, multiple municipalities have come on challenge because of both commercial, non-commercial, and let's say civil liberties groups coming in there and protecting the interests of people coming out for solicitation. Um, IML, along with my experience, um, has provided guidance that these are very hard ordinances to enforce in many, in many regards or enforce in such a manner that has been done before such as having big signs up there that say like no solicitation. And I don't remember the exact text of the sign that one in the chief. That was it. It said no solicitation, <laughs> generally. Well, then, it, then it referenced the ordinance. Okay. And then reference the ordinance. The ordinance is still on the books. It's just, we do not want to, and in my experience, in concurring with IML's um, guidance on this, these are hard to enforce. They should only be enforced in limited circumstances. And I don't want us to be involved in a civil rights lawsuit if we can play. Um, again, we can revisit the ordinance at some point in time, but right now the ordinance hasn't been challenged, so we don't see any reason to change it. Okay. Can I add something to that? So if, if somebody wants to put up a sign that says no soliciting, and somebody comes to their house and then can does and that person doesn't like that, can tell them to leave, whatever. Yes. Is that something, though, that they can pull? Well, you yes. can say, hey, I've got somebody soliciting here. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Yes. So it's two things. Number one, if you want them off of your property, the sign has to be at the edge of your property, so there's no trespassing. Yeah. And if you have a sign on your door, they can't ring your doorbell. So, yes, if they do either one of those things, you call the police. But beware of dog you, up to you, you can't ring the doorbell. Is that is that a if they, if they ring the doorbell and knock on the door, then they violated your your no solicitation sign on the door. The reason I ask is because um, there are other municipalities around us here that have uh, ordinances for soliciting, and you have to get a permit. Mm -hmm. uh, Crystal Lake has one. Pingree has the same thing. They Crystal Lake has one. You get one for thirty days. And then you've got to go back and renew it. Uh, Genoa has one where <clears throat> you can go and get a permit, but you have to have two other city permits before they will even look at yours. So every 
place seems to be a little bit different. And <clears throat> why I'm asking that question, is there any intention of Hampshire uh, going to the point of saying we will you need a permit to solicit in Hampshire? We could do that. We could pass an order. You could pass an order that said we would register. We would require registration. They have to come to Village Hall, fill out a form. Uh, we cannot charge a fee, by the way. Uh, so there would be administrative costs for that. And yeah. At this point, we don't see a need for that. But if the board chose to, that yes, we could do that. So, and then so, the reason I'm asking you this is this is did this come from state or where did it come from that said you the courts. The courts. you have to take that. Away. Um, certain, uh, let's say, special interest groups had advanced this cause um, and received favorable appellate court decisions in federal court. I think um, the question is why now? And the answer, the answer to why now is because our attorney advised us that we would probably we could be um, sued for the fact that we're enforcing an, an illegal statute. Yeah, I'm just curious to know whether it was a state mandate thing or it's come down through federal case law. And I've been part of those lawsuits where. Yeah, courts interpreted the state law, the courts interpreted local ordinance in conjunction with First Amendment, and the, the I believe that they've erred on the side of the First Amendment, but um, that's what the law is. The law of the land is the law of the land, and I want to avoid as many lawsuits as we can. I'd like to add one more thing. Okay. And one more thing, just uh, we had a We had a solicitor come in and say he's aware of, it, of that law, of the fact that our ordinance was not legal. And he asked him how much the fine was, and I told him, he said, fine, because I know I won't be fined. <laughs> you can't, your, your ordinance is illegal, and therefore you can't fine. So as soon as we had somebody like that object to it, and we spoke to Mr. Selly, it became pretty obvious to me that we should not have something posted or enforced that was not legal. But if you want us to register them, we could register them. Uh, the clerk would have to keep track of that. It's just a thought <clears throat> because this is what other uh, municipalities around us are doing. They, they vary. I think Pigby Grove has a four day um, permit. You can get $25 a day. You have to specify when you're going to be there, what times, and everything so else. So Pigby does they, charge, even though they can't charge? Yeah. We've been, I, I think it's Pigby. Right? Yeah. Um, I, I might have my township out of it. And I know there's revenue. You've got control if you, if you do that. I just. Curious to whether if, if we could do this, if we, we have complaints, honestly, I don't think we've got a single call at Village Hall. The police haven't had a call. But if, if you continue to get complaints, I would suggest that we look at it. We did have a lot of so, people really upset about so they going to the village. I, I, I understand that, but and people were kind of saying, Did you call the police? Did you call the police? You can't do that. Um, but there were quite a few of them, and I'm not on Facebook a lot. Um, about somebody going to the door and then pictures on the ring doorbells and honestly some creepy person coming to my house and asking that jeopardizes my safety and I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, so I really would like to see us pursuing that because the, this change now really kind of puts us all at risk for, I, I mean, I must have gotten about 20 calls on my phone for my roof damage for the hail that came by. And everybody's talking, you know, trying to get you to do the roof. And of course, I'm not talking to them, but that could be coming to my doorbell, too. And we've had that in the past. <clears throat> so I would really like to see something that the person has to come and register so we know who they are. So okay. the police department, if something happens later, the police department can see if there's an ID that's been checked. It's someone who's wanted for something. So I, my personal opinion is it's the safety of our residents, and I'd really like to see them have to get some kind of a permit registering their names and any other staff they've got with them so they don't fan out with 15 people. Is there some consensus of the board you'd like to see it's regulated? Yes. I have a question. Let me entertain that. If we do pursue this, does your no solic does a resident's no solicitation, no trespassing sign still hold effect? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I guess my opinion is people are going to go try to make a living. It, it, most of the time, no, no I'm not just dis not discarding what you said. Um, most of the time, the people that stop by are are usually churches, and I know they were exempt from the no solicitation anyway. Um, but uh, and political is also exempt from that. The in my opinion, I, I know it's paperwork. I think it does help avoid some of the stuff that you read about the more shady 
ones that are coming in to prey on people about like your driveway seal mm -hmm. and then they don't show up after they take a deposit, right? Some of that stuff, like if somebody comes to register, you know that whether you like their business or not, they're they're a business person that's going to go around and do things. And so long as it's not overburdened, it would be interesting to see what the proposal would be. Um, mm -hmm. What I was going to say for the, the PR committee, though, is since this is a change and there is a remedy for people to be able to control their own, own home, it may be good to put into our newsletter in the water bill of, hey, just to clarify the solicitor rule within the village of Hampshire, if you wouldn't like solicitors, here's what you need to do for your own home. I would, just like as an educational piece, I think that would be right. I would go one step further. I, I talked to Mr. Hedges about this a little bit, and we figured we'd bring it up with the board. We, when we, I was around before we had the ordinance, and then I was around when we passed the ordinance. Were you, Trustee Cooper? Right. Do you remember in the very? Do you remember back then we talked about issuing or buying stickers that would be available at the village hall that had our logo on it or something like that mm -hmm. that we could say that you know as far as the PR thing and then J uh, the Mr. Hedges conversation was like you know my, my thought process is, is okay we've changed it here's what we're going to do to remedy it and if you don't want them you can come to the village hall and get a sticker and then put it on your door then Jay's point Mr. Hedges point is is why don't we make them do something? That'd be the residents, right? Like we're trying to push the app and all of that kind of stuff. It would be an opportunity as far as like PR goes, right? It'd be an opportunity to come up with something to entice somebody to download the app and then register and get a sticker or something. You, just something to connect them with us. Or we could say the hell with it and just have stickers made up at the village hall, design them, and then put that also in the newsletter that if they want a no soliciting sticker, no cost, come to the village and get it. And light out. I, I, like, I like the idea of the sticker, and I don't know that I would say you have to download the app to get it, but I would say here's the sticker, and if you see something, here's the app that you use to, to share with the village and reporter right away, so make sure to download that. Have you seen those on Facebook? By the time the solicitor comes to your door and they're down the block, they've ruined any business you're trying to sell. I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds of people. Pile on. Watch the solicitor. He looks. He looks like a criminal. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's a creep. Oh, this is exact. Yeah. There's a lot of assumptions made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think that I think that staff, you guys have a pretty clear direction. Actually, I don't. I hear three over here and three over here. Say, just give them a sticker. Give them a sticker. sticker on a sticker. So stickers not available. a lot of publicity, but give them a sticker. Yeah. Uh, People well, you would want it in the newsletter. Well, I think maybe I think a newsletter would be fine. Yeah, a sticker. Come on down to Village Hall. We'll give you a sticker. Like here, here's the update in case people have questions. How expensive would the sticker here's be? Here's a sticker. Probably a couple bucks. Oh, really? No, no, I don't you know, think it'd be sticker? that much money. I think it's really All right. Respectfully, I, I don't I like it. We look into this. Yeah, 100. Yeah, that's please. why. That's what I'm saying. I was at, I was looking for direction for sticker. You got options and recommendations. Yeah. Like rather than on? rather than. I having people flood uh, the clerk's office here. Could we like put them in a, in a water bill, like the first water bill that we're yeah, raising in the rates? I, I think that's a great idea. Just like to know what the cost is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. I think it should also be made clear though that there are exceptions to that because when you come to somebody's door and they scream at you because there's no soliciting. They don't like to hear that there's an exception. <laughs> yeah, they normally say, well, you can't exclude religious or political, yeah. and then they go, well, those are the two I want to exclude. Yeah, so and they say, like, <laughs> we, so, yeah. we got it. It's still like Thank consideration, you. though, of, of an ordinance that actually requires them to have to come in and um, register. I'd like to know the names of the people that are going door to door Ask them, selling things. I can tell you I'm from a dog. Well, I think, but at the end of the day, if you don't want them at your house and you have a sticker in front of yeah. your door, then yeah. you, you don't have to be concerned about your safety because then you're calling the police anyway. Yeah. Um, next, are we are, uh, good with our streets report? We didn't even get to streets. Julie, to... Julie Lane had a crash. Julie Lane is such a slow street. So I'm assuming somebody perfect. slipped and fell like a icy thing. No. I don't know. I'd have to look. Yeah. I'm not really sure. It's yeah. We'll get back to you. One thirty-two. Yeah, I, you know, it's within the subdivision. Just accounts payable. Are we good to move on to accounts payable? Yes. 
I'll entertain a motion to approve the accounts payable with personnel in the amount of $403.48. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, or concerns? Lionel or Eric? Lionel. Lionel. Yes. I'm sorry, trustee not or trustee not. <laughs> it's after nine. Uh, <laughs> questions, comments? Ms. Clerk, you go call the roll, please. Mr. Matt. Aye. Ms. Alstreet. Aye. Mr. Robinson. Aye. Ms. Coder. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mr. Cole. Aye. Mr. Pass. Now we, uh, the, big, the big one, $288,182.66. Are there any questions? Ask if we, I mean, we can get the, I mean, granted, I was not on my email today, but to get these ahead of time, because we got them, what, two or three days ago? I mean, I came in, I picked up stuff, I picked up twice. Out. Yeah, I got, I got my last it was Friday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I came in and picked up twice. Mr. Khan emailed. Yeah, Mr. Khan, he emailed this. Was it? Yeah, that was, we moved the, we moved the packet up to Friday, but the, 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 I don't want to say concession, but the understanding was is that we would get the the um, accounts payable at least 48 hours ahead of time, and we have been. If we cut it out, if we cut them off on the Friday before, it's just a lot of bills get paid late. Okay. And I would have to authorize a bunch of payments to be dealt with. So, so we do get the the accounts payable, um, or we have been getting the accounts payable 48 hours ahead of time. Mm -hmm. You know. I think in the virtual, like the meeting virtual. No, he sends, he sends them out he sends, separate. An email. Email. The link so, but can, in future, in the future, can you go back and edit the invitation yeah. and, and attach it as well? Yeah. Because sometimes some of us just go back and look at our calendars and it's yeah. not there. Got it. And it's just, it's not really easy. Thank you. Yeah, and just to clarify, the accounts payable email was yesterday. Oh, really? I thought it was the other day. I apologize. Yep. It was, sorry, Wednesday. Wednesday at 11.02. I stand corrected. <laughs> That was yesterday. Thank you. I was yesterday. So, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, a, I've lived at Village Hall for this week. Yeah. yeah. And you're still a judge. And I still did it. <laughs> so, yeah. And we lived here as well. Yes, yes. you have. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff. Do we have any questions for the accounts payable? I will entertain a motion to approve the accounts payable in the amount of $288,182.60. Second. Questions, comments, and or concerns. I'm not hearing over here. Sorry. No, you're talking. It's me, not you. Okay. Roll call vote, please, Ms. Clark. Ms. Palestrini. Pass for right now. Come back to me. No, you can't. No, you can't. Do that. You can't do that. No, man. No, I'm, I'm approving your bills. Call, your, your vote no. In the amount of thousands then of vote no. 288,000, and I haven't read them. So no, then. Okay, fair enough. I just don't want to get caught. Illegal. Are we? Can we come back to her? Are we allowed to do that or no? You can still ask a question. I mean, in the it, it depends. It's, yeah. I mean, I, in other bodies, they will pass and then come back because oh, we'll be to the legislature that. does that. Mm -hmm. The Congress mm -hmm. does that. I, I've never seen the board do it. I have. We, okay, so, so are we allowed to do it? Or yes. Not? Okay, fair enough. Thank you. All right, then she gets her pass and we'll move the rest. <laughs> Mr. Robinson. Yeah. All right. I didn't think we were allowed to. Yeah. 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 Mr. Fodor? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Mr. Cole? Aye. Mr. Matt? Aye. No. Thank you. What do we have on the agenda next? Next, we have Village Board Committee reports. This is Development Commission. Uh, BDC is set to meet on April 10th, 6.30 here at Village Hall. Any questions? Mr. Bateman? April. April. It'll be on YouTube for you. April 10th at 6 30. Thank you. I just missed the number. Is it okay if we move on to public works, Mr. Kelly? It's up to the board. I said if there's any questions. That was my own question. Then that's it. Trustee Cole. I'll refer to Mr. Hedges. I haven't been to any. No report. Okay. Uh, Budget committee? Uh, budget committee met yesterday and it was a committee of the whole. I want to thank the budget committee for the time.
time that they've put in in consideration that we're reviewing the budget and discussions that occurred last night. And especially thank all of the staff, the department heads, Ms. Lyons, who has inevitably probably spent thousands of hours on this over the past couple of months. Uh, so thank you all very much for that. The end result is we officially have a recommendation that will come before this board at the next village board meeting, correct? Yep. The next village board meeting um, for an official FY25 budget. This will include all uh, approved recommendations by the committee and a final version of the budget to be put forth before the board for consideration. Any questions? So the 4th of April? That's what you're saying. So correct. For us. Is, that right? is that correct? So, so, um, I don't have the calendar. April 4th, April 4th or April 18th. So we will not be voting on the final budget on April 4th because otherwise we would have had to set the public hearing at this meeting. Um, because we can have the public hearing and the budget adoption at the same meeting. So we'll set the public hearing on the 4th and then we'll have the, the final budget on the 18th. I will have the final budget done before that, so um, I can send that out if that's your desire. Or at least and everybody everybody has seen the budget, but if you would like to send it out before and it's fine with the packet. Okay. Because the packet comes out on Friday and open about the adjustments and what the budget was. So yep. as long as it's within the packet on that Friday, we're good. Fair enough. Thanks. Any questions for budget committee? Thank you for all your hard work. Wonderful job. Any new business or other announcements? Uh, just just one. Uh, the Lions, the, the base for the Lions Club. Uh, I talked to them at the meeting and uh, they want to know if a Saturday would be okay to do it on a Saturday. Sure. So that, that would be more appropriate to be able to get some of their members to come to the water. So, um, if I look at this here, uh, how does the 30th sound? I'll set it up for that. Uh, what are you doing, Lyle? Yeah, it, it, well, it, you're just going to put the bench in place. The lines, oh, it, it's, like to, it's, it's like to attend. Yeah. That would be fine if we could do it maybe in the morning. Yeah, that's what they that's what they want to do. Sure. Just give me give me a time and we'll be ready. Okay. okay. And and uh, I'm not sure whether the final destination yeah. for that bench has been. I think you asked this before. We, we've said several times that we, the village would recommend that we put it on the side of Gardenberry. That if the lines have some place else you'd like to put it, we're happy to put it wherever you want. I'll, I'll double check them. I just thought there was a bench there on the front already. On the side of on, on round four blocks. Yeah. Okay. I hadn't I hadn't given a location that it was going to be put there. Okay. But then wherever you guys want to put it, it'd be fine. Okay. Um, I do have one thing. Um, you can call it new business or announcement. I just want to congratulate the Hampshire High School Theater Department yeah. for a phenomenal, what I've heard was a phenomenal show this weekend uh, through all of the hoops that they go through, through all of the games that were played. Um, unfortunately, I didn't buy a ticket ahead of time, so I wasn't allowed to buy a ticket. Um, but from everything I've seen online and the articles, the community stood with those students. It was uh, inspiring to see. It was the feedback was phenomenal, and so their courage and keeping with it. And just kudos to that theater department, all of the kids involved, their families. They're also pretty good actors. I heard. Well, I heard it was a great show. And so to everybody that went to it, I hope it was as good as I read about. And I was sad to have missed it, but uh, congratulations to them. That was phenomenal. It was great. One more announcement for the um, Historical Society has a program scheduled for um, March 28th, uh, Home School Days, to talk about the schools of this community back in the day and um, encourage people to attend. Um, really quickly, I just want to wish everybody happy Easter. Hopefully, and have a safe spring break to the kids that are on spring break next week. Sorry to all the parents that the kids are going to be all amped up and the weather's going to be looking like it's cold. Uh, May 4th is the ribbon cutting for Mellie's downtown so at about 11 o'clock. So make sure that you, uh, May, 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 May 4th. Um, and um, 
preview of things to come. April 26th is Arbor Day. Um, the village of Burlington has donated a tree in honor of Linda because Linda would always gather us together on, on Arbor Day and threaten, uh, namely Toby and myself, to show up or she would use one of those shovels to beat us with. Um, and so um, it's 10 o'clock over at Hempeck Park at, at April 26th. So um, we hope everyone can be there. It was really gracious of Burlington to donate the tree. One, That's it. One more thing. Sure. Um, I am picking up some garbage picking up sticks from Public Works, and if you see me out, um, I have extra sticks and extra bags. So feel free to join me at You're any picking, point. Picking up what? I'm picking up other people's trash because I'm sick of walking. Oh, by you're coming it. to the park district? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm sick of seeing it, and it's not. So if you happen to be out and your kids are bored and they're driving you nuts, send them over to me. I if they need service hours, I can sign it. So come find me. Awesome. There you go. I'll be out on the bike path. I'm just uh, all week, whenever it's nice, because I'm not going out tomorrow when it's snowing. One, one more thing too. Thank you, Trustee Good. <laughs> Uh, congratulations to the Park District as well on the reopening of Siler Park. Um, I can say that my family has enjoyed it, but it's packed with kids and they seem to really enjoy it. Let's mm -hmm. hope that everyone takes good care of this this one. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, they got it through an Oslag grant, I believe, and uh, it's been great reviews online and, and it seems packed. So congratulations to the Park District on the new park, and there's a lot more or the updated there's park. There's a lot more that's going to show in this day. Yeah, because we go much more than yeah, that's awesome. park. No? Yeah. All right, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Good night, everyone. Thank you very much.